Hey everyone, and welcome to another gate crash draft. It's probably going to be the last gate crash draft that I'm going to do. Um, we've got the Dragon's Maze coming up, and the previews are starting, so I think the next two weeks will be spent on, uh, on previewing those. Um, so for today we're going to have a bit of a throwback to the article of last week about Temple versus Card Advantage. And I want to put a bit more emphasis on those two sides uh, during this draft. So we have this first booster. We have a couple of good cards. Uh, we have a Cloud from the Raptor, a certain Swine, and Guardian of the Gateless, which I think are all pretty solid first picks. Uh, the rare is Nightfield Spectre. Uh, I do like the Spectre, especially since I'm such a fan of all the fixing in this format. Uh, he works uh, pretty well with a couple of gates, uh, the Prism or two. Um, and he's uh, firmly set on the card advantage side of the scale. Um, that said, being on the card advantage side in Gate Crash is not a very good place to be. So I'm, I'm gonna go to pick it. I'm going. The, the choice really comes down between the Raptor and the Swine, and the Raptor really is better um, Temple-wise, and I think Temple is what this set offers. I also think that Simic is on the draft online, so picking the Raptor is uh, is a very good first pick. Here. Then in this second booster we get a Mind Grind. A uh, Mind Grind is uh, again one of those cards that fits the uh, the card fronted scale. Um, <coughs> so it's it's probably straight out. Also because it's, it's the Demir colors, I don't like the Demir colors, I don't think the little plan works, so not even ma mentioning it. I do think that when we get to draft the three sets, uh, that we're going, uh, uh, th that Mind Grind is a valuable pick. If you start off with your Dragon's Maze booster with a bit of controller cards, you pick up a Mind Grind and Gate Crash, and then you support it with the Azorius, with the blue Azorius cards, uh, or maybe some of the black removals from um, from Return to Ravnica. Uh, you're in for a pretty solid control deck, and Mind Grind is a pretty good finisher for that. Uh, this booster for our current draft holds nothing but Cloud Fiend Raptor. Uh, the only cards that could table back to us are Prophetic Prism and Aether Eyes, uh, but they both are not tempo cards, they both are card advantage cards. Um, so they are not fit for the deck we're trying to reach. There is also the Pit Fight, which is pretty good in the tempo deck, but I'm not seeing that wheeling a lengthy booster like that. <coughs> okay, so this booster offers us a bit of a conundrum. There is no solid blue card and there is no solid Simic card. Uh, the only two cards that uh, that would fit the straight up Simic deck are the Mind Eye Drake and the Death of Snapshot, which I think are both a bit um, underwhelming, is the word. Uh, and it does have a lot of good gruel cards. There is Zerta Swine, there is Mugging, there is also a Salt Griffin, a Skinbrand Goblin, and Boros Guildgate as backup cards that are really good in, uh, in, in the red, in the Boros Gruel department. Um, I don't mind splashing red in my in my Simic for powerful cards such as Sirta Swine or a bit of removal like Mugging. I think the Swine is a bit better since when you're splashing you're going to at least the mid game before you get access to your mana. So I'm going to pick the Swine here. Uh, quality wise they're about the same but I think that on the splash the Swine is better. Something could have been said for just taking the, um, the Mind's Eye Drake because it works pretty well with the Raptors. But I think it's a pretty weak card overall. It's It's good in defending but we're trying to do a tempo plan here and that's not going to work with uh, with 2-5 flying breaks. Uh, if we get one later I don't mind playing him but I'm not really excited about it either. This is the third third test wide we're seeing. Um, <coughs> it um, gives us a sign that Cruel is open uh, because it, it really is one of the best Cruel cards. Uh, the best tempo card of this booster is probably map cap skills but I'm still kind of hoping we can make those Raptors work for us. Um, the Ivy Lane Denizen would be the card if we went to go straight up Civic, but I think Sirtas Swine just outclasses the Denizen at every level, even if it's on the splash, so I'm taking the second Swine. Then in this booster we get finally the Simic card we're, we've been waiting for, which is Frilled Oculus. It's one of the best Simic cards. Uh, I've had a discussion last weekend with, uh, with Frank Rolofs about whether it's better than Croconera or not, and I think Frilled Oculus is the better card of the two. This may sound like a bit of if a bit iffy because it the Corcanura has a lot of, of upsides over Phil Douglas, but the fact that it's only two mana is really so important. Um, it makes sure all your one drops go off, it makes sure that uh, it can attack on turn three because a three five is not stoppable. Um, and it just has decent stats. While Corcanura is a bit slower, needs a bit more building up. And I am always so incredibly happy to have Phil Douglas in my deck. Uh, the other two cards here, Ivan and Denison and Wasteland Viper, they are pretty playable cards, but they can't hold a camel to fill up with something to take that. <coughs> this booster has uh, Guardian of the Gateless, 
And I was considered for my first pick, but I didn't mention it, but it really is a very good card. It's a very solid creature. Uh, it's a bit late, but it can stop almost everything. Um, and it's, it's just one of the biggest flyers out there, which makes it incredibly valuable. It's also incredibly easy to play because it's one single white mana, so you, it'll never strain your mana base like uh, something like the Massive Raid would do in this booster. So it, it really is very good. Um, that's it. I'm going to pass it along for the Simic Guild Gate, especially if you want to get those swines in our action. Uh, we need to be sure that our mana base is pretty solid, and Simic Guild Gate will help us do that. <coughs> this booster has um, Sage Rose Denizen for us. Uh, it's a pretty fine card since it helps our curve out by playing a Raptor and Arcanos and uh, Sage Rose Denizen have two, three Raptors. And uh, that's pretty good. Uh, its mill ability is not irrelevant. It's not really relevant either if we don't get black in there, but um, it's. Uh, it's, it's just something that, that's working. I mean, if you get three or four Sage Road Denizens, they can become a backup plan on their own if you're playing against a slow Orphan deck. Uh, the other option here would take Scorchwalker and try to force some more rule out of it, because I'm really getting a feeling that it's open. But um, I don't really want to abandon my weapons at this point, or at any point for that matter. So I'm just sticking with the blue, taking the Denizen. Um, this booster is uh, a bit more shallow. None of these cards... Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to have none of these cards enter my deck. If one of those had to, I think it will have to be the Cling Animals because it is the best card for Evolve. Way of the Thief is um, considerable. If we have a couple of gates, it can be uh, a finisher, but it's nowhere near as good as Holy Mantle or Gift of Forza. And, and being for mana really is expensive for what it does. So we're taking the Animal. Uh, I like Alpha Authority in my sideboard against the Wolf Heavy. Uh, um, and I remove a heavy uh, Demir and uh, an Ors of Dex, uh, but it still is a Cyborg pick, and uh, I'm not considering it at this point. We have here another Madcap skills that actually came back and went for our first booster, and Keymaster Rogue. Um, it, it doesn't really look like uh, like we're getting a whole lot of green cards, I didn't see any of those. So I'm going to take the Rogue. Uh, in the worst case scenario, we'll have to drop the Boars and can pick up the Demir cards, and that's okay. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that we wasted two very high picks on the Boars. Uh, but I'm still not discarding them. We might get greed from our other neighbor, and um, <coughs> it's uh, it's not a bad thing to uh, to have a little bit of green and a little bit of red if the rest of it is only blue. I'm taking the Wildwood Rebirth here because I see I see myself boarding the in and the rest is worthless. So in this booster, we're this was the, the the aggressive red and white booster that we saw. I'm going to take out the Guild Gate because I don't think all the other cards are as good as the Gate. And I do really like screwing people's mana. Uh, people that are trying to play a deck like, like ours, like with Swines. Um, if someone is going to hate out all of our fixing, then we're going to have a hard time playing the Swines. So um, that, that's a valid counter strategy in itself. Sometimes I get a very late gate. I had it a lot in Return to Raftica drafts that the gates would just go 12, 13 pick. Uh, and that's just this is amazing. Uh, if you're setting out for a plant that could use a bit of fixing, and they're rewarding you by giving you that fixing in the spots where the unplayable cards should be, uh, you're in very good shape. So so I'm just not allowing anyone to, to get in a, into that advantage. Um, <coughs> this booster is giving us a, a really awkward lineup of cards to think about. We have uh, first a rare Rubber Belt Raiders, which is a really good card. Um, and if we are going Simic, then it will certainly make our deck, and it will probably be one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, that said, it's still triple green and or red, and we are on a basically mono blue plan. So if we stick with green, it's okay. If we don't get any green and do get grizzly spectacles or things like that, then we're going to swap to to Simic I, or to Demir. Sorry, um, I can see this happening. So um, I'm not really sure if this is the pick. We have Drake Wing Crashes and Slaughterhorn, uh, which are uh, viable Simic alternatives. We also have Gorkland Rampager, um, but I'm not going to pick him over Rubble Belt Raiders. I mean, if you're going to play red and green, then the Raiders is better than the Rampager, even though the Rampager is really good as well. Uh, there is uh, a lot of Boar's cards, once again, to keep in mind, there's Assault Griffin, Boar's Charm, Martial Glory. So we're feeding the Boar's player on our right, although I don't think he's directly on our right. Uh, I'm going to take the Gamble, I'm going to take the Raiders here. I'm going to assume that I can make the Swines, the Raiders, and, and the whole Civic plan work. So that's why I'm sticking with it. Um, <coughs> and while I'm saying that we're getting this, this next booster, which has uh, a total of zero cards that we'd actually want to play in this deck, there is, of course, the, the tempo high madcap skills, which would be reduced to uh, being on a splash, as would be the, the other red cards that we have at this point. And there is uh, Simic Kirun. 
which I don't think is very impressive at all. There are a lot of other good cards in this booster. There's Knight of Obligation, there's Bellstreet, Spike, Ripcast, and, uh, and Boros Elite. There's the Removal Spell, Execution Swing, so we're feeding off an Ors of Player. Um, since we're not messing with the Ors of Scholar, I don't mind passing this much Ors of and trying to change someone's mind from from going into Boros with Cruel to Boros with Ors of, if they're planning that. Um, because it, it will give us a lot more green to work with. That said, uh, I'm not going to hate any of these cards, I just want this this pack to be as, as saturated with Orsa that can deal with it. I think it's Simic Key Rune because it's the most solid sign that someone is picking out Simic cards for them. Then we get this booster, and this booster holds uh, a whole lot of nothing again. Uh, we have another Keymaster Rogue, I really like this guy. Uh, he's great for tempo because he's unblockable, so it's uh, he's just putting on a clock with, with no problems. Uh, his bonus ability is pretty relevant if you have a lot of evolved guys, especially if they start small like the Clifton Raptor and Shamble Shark. Um, the alternative is taking a rest scarab, which is a decent guy, he has uh, a lot of power and toughness for his 5 mana, and he will always evolve your creatures as well because he's just so high on the curve. Um, but I think we can pick up a uh, generic fat guy for later anyway, I mean there's always adaptive snap just coming around and maybe we can, uh, can get something better than, than this guy, I'm just going to take the rogue here. So in this booster we're going to see once more how open Orso is with 1000 the 1000 lashes, the Kingpin's pet, the Syndicate of Tides. Um, and uh, we're just, it, it's just flooding in, and we're going to reward an Orzov player so much by shipping this, all of this once again. Here we already have a, a direct better card than Risk Scrap, which is Leyland Phantom. Uh, we have Ivy Lane Denison, which I um, uh, I think is decent in, an, uh <coughs> in a swimming deck like ours. And we have Miming Slime, which is solid, not too good, not too bad, but it's probably as late game as the Leyland Phantom, so I, I would probably pick the Phantom over it. That said, I think the Denison beats both of them out at this point. Um, simply by being a very solid creature and solidifying us a bit more in green, and I really want to um, show to our right neighbors that I am occupying Simic. So I'm not letting a guy like this go. So, this booster gives us uh, some better cards for us to look out for, namely being Cruel Charm and Cruel Guild Gate. The Guild Gate is imperative for us because we need that fixing to make those swines work. Um, if you already had a lot of fiction, you would have taken a cool charm. It's one of the ultimate uh, cards in tempo advantage. Um, making sure that every blocker your opponent has is invalidated is pretty good. Um, taking out a 2 for 1 flyers is pretty good, and the other ability is worthless and limited, so I'm not even discussing that. But the cool charm really pushes your tempo up a notch. Um, you can just you can roll on in with your early game, and once the game stalls up, you think you're going to lose your tempo, you use cool charm, and you still win that race. It's amazing in doing that. Uh, I'm going to take the Gruel Guild Gate because we need that fixing. <coughs> and here we get another Gruel Guild Gate. The rest of the booster is pretty empty for us. Um, there's a late Boros card coming out, it's, uh, and there's still Ember Beast in this booster. So I'm um, I'm pretty concerned about the state of this draft. We um, we got so much Orzov, we got so much Boros in the first booster and the second booster. I think that everyone is hopping onto the Deaver train, um, trying to get that uh, that flyer uh, extort deck. Uh, working that means Simic is taking a huge amount of splash damage, and the first two Raptors that we pick might have actually doomed this draft for us uh, since we're now in the pool with probably five other players that are trying to do the same thing. So I'm going to take the Rule Guild Gate, solidify the fixing we have, <coughs> and, and just see what I can pump out of the last booster. I mean, what we, s what we have is not bad, it's not the ideal Simic I was looking for. We're lacking incredibly in the early game department right now. So the third booster has to make up for that. Um, here's another generic fatty that we can take uh, to occupy our five spot. We also have Inchalic Edict, which is fine removal, but it's never going to make this deck. Um, so I'm, I'm going to leave the Inchalic Edict, hope that someone will pick it up and st stay to their white colors and pass me the green cards, and, and I'm fine with it, that, that just snapped you on my deck. So here we get some late rewards. We have the Rapid Hybridization, which is a a pretty good removal spell, unfortunately it's uh, on the card advantage side instead of the tempo side since it delivers um, an immediate blocker to your opponent. That said, a deck like Simic really has trouble getting rid of a Holy Mantle, getting rid of a uh, Gift of Ors of Hour, or just any generic fatty at all. Um, if someone plays an Aurelia against your Simic deck, you're pretty much going to kill over and die. And Rapid Hybridization is one of the few cards that can help you out with that, so I'm going to take it. Uh, the Verdant Haven is worth considering because it will fix our red, but since we already have two real guild gates, I don't really think we need it. 
Um, if we can pick up one more fixer or fatigue prism, then we'll be in really good splash shape. If we don't, we'll just play two mountains and it'll still be okay. Uh, here we get Skinbrand Goblin, which I'm going to pick, uh, pick out. So I'm not giving the rule player another card to work with. Uh, we could take the last dots, but our four drop is already piling up with cards. So I'm just going to hate out the Goblin. Here I'll take the removal spell. And these are just pretty much all generic cards that, that don't make decks. Uh, there's another round with Rebirth. This is pretty good with Swines. Uh, if you're ever playing against one of the controllers or more removal heavy decks, I'll just board the Rebirth and uh, make a lot of use of the Swines. <coughs> and as usual, I'm, I'm sorry about me uh, sniffing and coughing and stuff. It's uh, it's my allergies or it's calls, I don't know. It's just so plugged up again. and. Um, <laughs> well, you get to listen to it, so. So, so far what we have is um, a not too terrible outlook. I mean, this deck is looking solid. We need some early games, so we're going to focus on that. The rest of the deck is pretty coming together, and the only concern I have is that we're being incredibly hated out of this, uh, out of this draft, and that the uh, uh, five or six of the players in this draft are going to be really disappointed with the decks, and one Boros card and one, uh, one Boros player and one um, Orzov player are going to be incredibly happy with theirs. Uh, here we open the booster and we have two cards that immediately spring out at us, which are Experiment 1 and Hands of Binding. And uh, they do because that are the two temple cards of, uh, of, of, this, uh, of this booster. Um, all the other cards are, are also a bit lower on the power level skill. Um, I, there are a lot of cards that I don't mind playing, but as a first pick, you know, I, I, it has to be one of these two. Um, and weighing the options, uh, we're not going to move out of green at this point. We have nothing to support any change to Dimir. We can't try mono blue because the power level of having the green cards is just too high. Um, so we're going to take the experiment one. The hands of binding may have been better if we were already solid in our early game, but we're really lacking on that. Uh, experiment one can make up for that a bit. If we get two drops and three drops, then it can even make for perfect curves, and I really like perfect curves. So, so we're taking this as the best card in the booster. <coughs> And then we have here um, another one of those pretty empty boosters. Uh, the three obvious cards for me that spring out are the Scap Clan Charge, the Lena Phantom and the Keymaster Rogue. However, we already have a lot of, of late game and I don't really pile up more, especially since we're getting three one drop evolved creatures. We want to make sure that the curve works. And um, I'm a bit disappointed by this, but I think we need to pick the Simic Flux Match. Um, we need two drops and three drops, and uh, in a worst case scenario, we're, we're not getting any of those anymore. And then we need to work with what we have. And even though Snake Flux Mage is a pretty weak card, in my opinion, it can still help pump up these creatures if we don't have a two drop. And that's what we should be looking for at this moment. So I'm just putting it in. <coughs> Sorry about that again. <coughs> and here we have um, Shamble Shark. It's probably the only card that we, uh, we really want at this point. It's early game, it's evolved for the late curve. It's a pretty solid creature on its own, so we're taking this and we're really happy about it. Okay, so here we're getting a, a pretty empty booster again. There is a Gruel Charm uh, without the competition of a Gruel Guild Gate at this point. Uh, there are a lot of low quality cards in here, so I guess this booster was, wasn't very good to begin with. Uh, there are still the Bomber Corps and the Smite and the Crystal Street Denizen, but they are not really high picks at all. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm pretty happy to have one of those in my Boros deck, or in my Orzhov deck, but they're not really high picks, and it's only the four picks, so three better cards have taken out, I can understand that, so this was an empty booster. I'll take the Gruel Charm and have a, li a little bit more late game potential than we otherwise would have, and I'm, I'm not, uh, not too sad about that. Um, this booster is emphasizing once more that no one is playing Boros. Having a Fortress Cyclops, Night Watch, it's Rich Tiger, Boros Guildgate, and still Spark Trooper, which are all at least playable in the Boros deck. Uh, there's also Fire Engine Denison, which people think is playable, but I think it's horrible. Um, we have Sapphire Drake for our deck, or Prophetic Prism. Uh, Sapphire Drake is uh, going to sit on the late game part of the curve. Uh, it will help us evolve our creatures, uh, it will help out with everything Denison and give creatures flying. But so far I don't think that will be our problem. Um, the Prophetic Prism will help us fix in those three red cards that we have. And um, it's a bit of a, uh, a, a, um, it's a, a tough choice. I mean, they're both pretty good cards for this deck right now. I'm going to take Prophetic Prism because we have so little to do in the first turns and so much to do in the last turns. And oh my god, another Cloudfang Rappler. Let me first finish about this prism. 
<coughs> and um, having something to do in turn two, even if it isn't a creature, um, it cycles into a better uh, a better hand and it fixes our mana. So I think that's worth a bit more than just another fat guy on the end of the curve where we already have the Swines and we already have the Snapchat and the Rogue Bolt Raiders. And, and we probably are going to be a lot of stuff with our mana anyway with the Key Master Rogues bouncing creatures back and forth. Um, in this booster we have another Cloud Fear Raptor. And although I'm a, pretty b a bit concerned about that we have only four cards in the second and third turn that can make it bigger, it still is a pretty good card. Uh, we of course, we also have Experiment 1, which can make it bigger. And this booster gives us um, a very nice surprise in Metropolis Sprite. It's, it's exactly what we wanted. It's in the Shamble Shark, but it'll do. It'll pump up all these guys, it'll be a decent 2 drop. Um, I'm really happy to have this guy. And the Disciple is coming in. Now this draft is coming together for us. Uh, we can take up this armor transport here. Our early game is just is just flooding in right now, and I'm really happy that it does. I will have Millennium Gargoyle. Uh, I think it has to contend with Kling Animal in the fourth drop spot, so we'll just see if we can get something even better. Spell Rupture is a good tempo card for a deck like this. If you do one or two drop and then leave mana out for Spell Rupture, you can probably counter a pretty good spell, meaning we don't play the Millennium Gargoyle or the Kling Animals. <coughs> And all in all, this is looking like a pretty good deck. I don't think we're going to table anything in the last four cards, so that will just be random jump. And then this is what we're looking at to play with. Um, there are some pretty unexciting cards in this deck. We are still playing Simic, Kiru, and we have Ivy Lane, Denizen, without all that many green creatures. And um, that's that, But that's okay. We have four one-drops of really high value. Uh, we have th those uh, Metropolis Sprite and the Disciple rolling in the last uh, in the last booster were really really good gifts for us. Um, we got uh, now four two drops. We got three three drops, and we got s well good cards for the late game. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And um, yeah, I think this deck has a chance. Uh, now it's it's just up to uh, having the right sequence of cards. I mean, this deck can still fizzle pretty much if we keep a hand with a couple of lands and a 3 and a 4 drop and we draw only Raptors. Um, where did that card go? But that's uh, that's no problem. That's, that's no problem. Uh, I mean, we're going to um, we're, going we're, we're going to have bad draws. I mean, that's, that's just inherent in magic. But at the times we're going to get good draws, we're going to really have fucking awesome blow me out of the water good draw so it's going to make up for that and I really see this deck doing something good so now we need to decide on the mana so we really have our fixing ready we have the prism and uh, two gates uh, adding one mountain we have four red sources I think four red sources is enough for the pretty much late game cards of this uh, we could afford to play, s to play two mountains if we really wanted to uh, we have the prism which also fixes the blue and the green if it needs to be we have a Simic guild gate and a Simic Kirun um, so there's, um, there is an option for a second mountain, however it does sort of collide with the four creatures that we can't cast on turn one with that mountain, so I want to limit that a bit. Um, mm. So we're going to put in one mountain, and um, the other f uh, 13 lands will be divided between islands and forests. I'm going to give the advantage to the forests in this, uh, or to the islands in this, because we have three raptors and one experiment, and most of the two drops are blue as well. So this looks like a decent configuration. I'll make it a bit bigger for you guys to look at. And um, this is what we're going to play. So, yeah, I have a good feeling about this draft. I think that there are two decks to avoid, um, which are the incredibly powerful Ors deck and the incredibly powerful Boros deck, which we saw wheeling around. Um, but I still think that we have one of the best of the other six decks. Uh, and we can give that Ors of Decker run for his money, we can give that Boros Decker run for his money. And we're certainly going to try. So I'll see you in the first game, and um, let's see how it does. Okay, so here we are for the first game. Um, we won the die roll, so yes, we're going to play first, and we're getting this hand. Um, this hand is a little bit awkward because we are aiming for a tempo deck, and this hand does not provide us any tempo at all. At best, it provides us a turn three shamble shark. I'm still going to keep this, because we have all of our mana, we have um, a curve to look for, we have a 3-drop, we have a 4-drop, we have a 5-drop, so we have things to do. Um, and I don't mind that our turn 2 being Prophetic Prism. So uh, we could even lock out and uh, find an island on turn two, uh, on our first draw, and then this hand will be amazing. So I'm just keeping this, just rolling with it. 
We could even draw um, the experiment one and have an amazing turn three with experiment one, the shamble shark. So I, I like the prospect of this hand, um, and I don't think it's very bad at all, even though it's lacking one color mana. Uh, it's also important to note that we don't have any cards in the deck that require the double blue, so even if we don't draw an island all game, we're not in bad shape, because the prism is going to pull us through on that one. So that's, um, that's okay. Um, yeah, and what we want to draw... Uh, well, obviously, uh, the experiment one on the island would be the best draw for us on the first one. After that, um, we could just use anything that's curve related. Any creature will probably do something to pump the Shamble Shark is, uh, is pretty good. Um, if we're going to draw Raptors this game, I'd rather have them now instead of later, obviously. Um, but that's okay. I mean, even if we draw a couple of lands before draw any action, we still have things to do up until turn 5. That means we have drawn uh, 6 cards by that point, 5 cards uh, and, and 1 from the Prism. Uh, when we add up turn six and um, and you know if they're all six lands then okay we'll be stuck for a turn but then I can obviously classify this as a really terrible draw with four spells and nine lands so uh, I don't think that's happening <coughs> so um, while we're waiting for our opponent there's uh, there's a bit of dragon's maze already spoiled uh, a couple of cards I'm pretty excited about those cards that I've saw so far. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really nice set, and from what I'm seeing, they're aiming more at uh, making it as over the top as it can be. Um, I've seen um, a lot of cards which are rewarding you for uh, doing something special with those cards. Uh, maybe they cost much. I, I've seen a Planeswalker, Rails Eric. Uh, he's he's a pretty good guy. Um, there are these uh, this new mechanic, the fuse, which is pretty good. Um, but it's also mana intensive, so I think that Gatecrash is going to be the underdog in, in the next draft uh, format, where its tempo is just going to be overshadowed by the incredible, um, well, card power of Dragon's Maze, and the incredible solidity that was returned to Raftica. And it'll sure it'll bring its tempo to the mix, but it will be it will be underwhelmed. And I think that a lot of the tempo cards that are shining in this format um, will be just. Just going down to playable, and one of the cards that are playable in this format will be going down to unplayable. I take a card like Bomber Squad, which is pretty fine if you can manage to stay on curve, one drop, two drop, three drop, and have Bomber Corp and shoot. Um, it's going to be pretty pretty much degraded if uh, if the other sets come into the mix, because um, you're, n you're not going to attack all that much anymore. There are a lot of good defenders which can stop you. There is a, a lot of good removal that can destroy your battalion curve and the one two door just isn't powerful enough to match up with the other cards. So uh, that's something to be aware of. I mean, cards like Vojic, Helper, Deus will always find a home in a deck that with white and red is the main cause. Because it is just so powerful, it has three power for two mana, it can knock down a lot of cards. And it is good on its own. A card like Bomber Squad just fails at those points. It's only good when it has Battalion, and even then, it's it's not never going to be anything more than just regular good. Um, at its best, it can shoot out a blocker and then survive combat. That that's the best case scenario. It's not going to finish anything for you. So um, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. To see how that will work out. Um, our opponent returned, so we'll play the World Guild Gate in the best turn. And he comes out of the swamp, which is probably good news for us, since he, uh, well, he could still be the Ors of Deck, but, you know, a plane would have been a lot more distressing. Uh, we draw a Keymaster Rogue, which is fine, it allows to bounce a bit and stuff, and we get a Death to Snap Joe, which is more late game. So next turn, we um, are probably going to uh, play the land, ship it, and he is playing a Rakdos deck. We don't see the creature, that's okay. We get Simic Flux Mage. Okay, I'll just play the forest. We'll play the Shamble Shark at the end of his turn. In our turn, make a comeback with Sage Rodin and Sinatra's Flux Mate, and Tree to Shark and send it in. That seems to be the, uh, the prospect for now. <coughs> at this point, I wouldn't mind drawing a land to keep the curve going. Um, we're going to need two anyway to make use of the Snapjaw and probably of the Swine. I don't see where he's going with his deck. Uh, he has two swamps in the mountain. Probably uh, he has nothing left. So, I'll just feed in, uh, feed in the Shamble Shark. He might have a removal for it now, but that's okay. I mean, Shamble Shark is always the guy to trade for the removal, so. And here we get a natural island, which is uh, pretty good. I mean, England would have done, uh, one of the gates would have been a bit of a, 
bummer. I don't know even a bummer. Since we're going to play a three drops turn anyway, uh, we're going to play the flux mage. It'll uh, help uh, up the shamble shark, and it can still profit from the sage for denison next turn. And he has to devour flesh. We could have attacked the shamble shark first, but he devoured flesh it anyway, so there is no point. I'd rather see if he doesn't have it and get an extra, you know, an extra damage hit from the flux mage. <coughs> So next turn we'll just play Sage for Denison. If you draw a land, you can play Adaptive Snapjaw. And the turn after we can play the Denison and have the Snapjaw to grow a little bit as well. Um, I'm really not seeing where his deck is going. He might have white and tried to capitalize on both the Orzhov and the, and the Boros cards that came late. Um, but his mana base already is a little bit awkward, having two mountains and two swamps. And there's more might infantry. <coughs> And here's Cloud from the Raptor, which is uh, another one of those really good draws. We're just going to play it out and play the Denison after. Both of these guys will grow. So now we suddenly have enough blockers to block both of his guys. The next turn we can have Keymaster Rogue, make them both grow again. Um, or we can, if we draw a land, have the Snapjaw or the Spine and make them also grow. So we'll be having big guys next turn. Here's the Plane. Well, it was a bit unavoidable at this point. Uh, um, <coughs> the real question is, how is this deck composed? Um, if he was playing Orzhov with a splash into Boros, or Boros with a splash into Orzhov, one of these two colors would have been the splash color, but we've seen a Blizzard Zilliqa's creature and a Warmite Infantry, and those are not splash cards. Uh, he might be a three color even deck, which is a major advantage for us, because he'll be messing up with his lands, as he did right now. Um, he's taking out the Civic Flux Mage, which is, uh, is no problem at all. I can see why it would be starting to get a problem for him in time. Um, but considering our hand, we have all the time we need to work with this guy. So here's Frilled Oculus. I like Frilled Oculus. I'm going to play Frilled Oculus because it's um, it's the best card to play. It's better than the Rogue. And it still pumps up our Raptor. So, uh, so we get to, uh, to make him lose two cards. See a little bit more of his deck. Ammer Beast and another Mountain. We get a 2-3 Raptor. Um, I'm going to send in the Raptor because I'm pretty sure that these two guys can hold Warmind Infantry and I'm not losing a race to Basilica Scripture with a hand like this. So we'll just see how much damage we can put in before uh, before we start thinking defensive. <coughs> he has four cards in hand. He has three mana. He's played something every turn, so he's probably holding uh, a couple more spells at, at the very least and a couple more lands. I think it's, it's a mix. Um, so we're just waiting what he is to do. Uh, there are some pretty worst case scenarios, like um, him playing Skynet Legionnaire and attacking us with everything. Um, which means that we'll take uh, three depths of the air, but he's already committed to Death's approach. There goes the Raptor, that's okay. We still have the Keymaster Rogue to, uh, to pull through the unbuckle damage. He has a Boros Cult Gate, which means he does nothing for his board, and his creature is the only one to do anything. Here we have another land. Um, we have a couple of options. We can attack with the Oculus. Um, that's always okay. I mean, if he blocks it, we'll take out the Warmind Infantry or take out the Trick, but we can't do anything else that turn. Uh, I'm not really committed to playing any one of the, be the big guys, since the Warmind Infantry is uh, on its own. It's not going to pass through the Sage Road Denison on the moment, so now just unless he has one of the Haste creatures. Um, the Basilicus creature is not really putting the tempo on it. It'll take him seven turns at this rate, so we have time on our side. I'm just going to send in the Oculus, see if I can chip him for a damage, and then play the Adapter Snapjaw. Okay, he's taking the damage. The worst thing that could happen right now is that the active tree is the Snapjaw, and I think we'll have to trade it for the Sage Horde Denison, Denison then. Um, to prevent getting a whole lot of damage. I mean, Sage Horde Denison would either have to block the Snapjaw or the War with Infantry. You could block the War with Infantry, take 2 damage more, um, and then play the Zerta Swine, making the Snapjaw a bit bigger. But uh, he is playing red and white, and Boris has some pretty explosive cards. Um, it seems that he does have a lot of lands that he isn't needing right now. Uh, all of the cards that he's showing so far um, are not committed to either the tempo or the card on his plan. He has some some really awkward removal if he's going for tempo, like uh, that's approach in the, the power flash. Um, and he has some really awkward cards if he's going for tempo, like the Warmind Infantry and uh, uh, sorry, sorry um, for card funds like the Warmind uh, Warmind Infantry and the Ember Beast, because they are pretty much reliable on having a, a good tempo curve and getting out there. 
So his deck is, is pretty undecided on what it wants to do, and he has two cards in hand. He already played the land for his turn, and um, it's just seeing what he has. He might just blow us out with one of the rare bombs of seven mana at this point. But I think he's just holding um, pretty indecisive cards that really don't help him against our board. <coughs> I mean, Active Treason is another one of those cards that really isn't, is tempo oriented and he does have a lot of cards on his cards. And yeah, here comes a Spark Trooper. <coughs> you know, Spark Trooper is another one of those cards which really is tempo. And um, he only has one card left, he still has the Basilica Switcher, so I want to minimize my damage here. Um, I think I'm going to trade the Snapjaw for the Environment Infantry and be done with it. We still have these two cards which are way more powerful than the single card he can have. Um, and now the question is if I want to prevent 3 damage with Stage 4 Denison. If we take 7 we go to 6 and it, if he draws a spell every turn or if he has something like Boris Charm it will be done pretty soon. Um, I want to avoid that so I'm going to, to buy us 3 life with uh, Stage 4 Denison. Uh, we'll take 4 damage, go to 9, uh, they'll have to have some time to get us to get rid of us. We still have the Swine and the Oculus to, to be attacking for us. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Here goes the Oculus. Could play the Ivory and Denison right now and then the Swine next turn, but I really want to get that Swine in to, to, to deal those damages. Um, he's going to have to pull this game for us, 27 life is a lot. This creature still is a clock, even if it's a very little clock. And uh, he's of course throwing spells to do things with and it extorts us. And here's Deathback the Angel, and if there's one thing I didn't want to see right now, it's Deathback the Angel. <coughs> so yeah, that's going to be a problem for us. Uh, we don't have a lot of answers to the Angel. Um, I'm going to attack him with both of our creatures anyway. I don't think he can afford to block the Angel. He might block the Frilled Oculus and see if we have a trick, but it seems like a stupid thing to do since we're dead in the turn. And he's not blocking, so I'm playing the Ivy Lane Denison. So this next tech step will bring us to one and we'll die to a single spell, so... <coughs> so I, I don't think we're going to win this game anymore. Yeah, and here he has Bomber Core. Another one of those cards that doesn't really align with the rest of his deck. Um, but we're losing to it anyway, so. Uh, well, there we have it. We have, uh, this is our sideboard, and there really isn't anything in this sideboard that would make this deck run better. Um, we had a decent hand. Uh, things went uh, not perfect, but they went well enough, and still we lost to the Angel. I think it really was the power of the Death Pact Angel that made us lose, and nothing else. Uh, if he had uh, just random dorks after this point, he wouldn't have won this game. So we're just uh, going to see what uh, what the next game is going to bring. Uh, we're of course hoping we're for a one drop and a two drop and uh, putting in that tempo on his. He uh, sh showed us a lot of cards that are highly situational. Um, there are cards like the Spark Trooper and the Death Approach that really don't work together. Uh, the Spark Trooper is, is focused so much on, on tempoing it out. And that's approach is focusing so much on winning the grindy late game. Um, so his, his deck is just contradicting itself and it's losing in power. It's probably three color evenly, uh, which is, uh, it's, it has to wreak horror on his mana base. So um, I think we still have an edge, we still have the better deck. And this is exactly the hand I was hoping for, except with one more land. Uh, we can gamble with this. Uh, if we draw a land, we have the Oculus, we have the Sprite, we have a fat Raptor. Um, so we have the rapid hybridization to turn a raptor into a three three if you really have to. So this is this is we could gamble this. On the other side, if we mulligan, we can get a hand like this, but with an appropriate lands. Uh, we're already a game behind, so I don't want to gamble. I'm going to just mulligan this, and then we get something like this. And uh, you know, this isn't good either. We can play any of the spells. We have a World Raider, which is something to look forward to, but we still are going to need the blue stars to make this work. Going with the five cards has the liability of being a worse hand than this. Um, I think we should keep this, even if we do nothing. We are very dependent on our draws, but going to five, we're getting um, uh, probably a whole lot of nothing in return. 
the, we are really dependent on having that curve and uh, getting a hand with the tree lance, a raptor and, and a fizzle is worse than having this. So we're just keeping this and hoping we can draw it out. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, we've seen the duality of his deck, so chances are he's not going to be able to put a lot of pressure on us in the early game. And if he puts a lot of pressure on, then the chances are that he doesn't have any follow-ups for the late game. Um, so we just have to see how we uh, how we draw and if we can manage to get out of this. Um, the best draw, of course, would be to draw an island in the forest. Um, and then just be able to curve and get the rogue operators in turn 4 and hope that it can stick with us uh, for the rest of the game. Um, the bad draws, of course, would be to draw a string of blue cards, which you can't cast and just lose to uh, to his two drop, three drop, four drop uh, curve. So we'll just have to uh, have to see how that goes. Okay, we have another blue card. Can still play the forest last turn. Yes, Bomber Core. I'm not really concerned about that card. And here we draw nothing. So we ship turn back and, um, and we'll just hope that he doesn't have uh, anything to follow up on that Bomber Core. <coughs> he has Madcap skills. So that's bad news for us. Uh, we're already behind the tempo. I know that Bomber Core is going to finish us off in five turns. Unless we can get two um, two creatures, but we're not we're not running any land, so we're not going to win this game. Um, I think this match is already over at this point. Uh, even if we draw an island, we need two turns to get rid of the bomber core. Uh, he gets all the time he needs to develop. Uh, we can put the pressure in back, which is what what was the plan eventually. Uh, even if he's not doing anything, this is not a card we can use at all. Just going to trade and throw away the spell corruption because that's not going to help us anymore. Yeah, that is uh, not a card I'm afraid of at this point. And the growth time, so this game is over. Even if we draw an island next turn, there's nothing we can do about it. The Bomber Corp dealing us 8 damage, so... What a bust. Um, yeah, it's uh, <coughs> this is really disappointing. We had a good deck, and uh, the first game was okay. We lost to a dead like the Angel. I mean, it's a mythic rare, it happens, it's a really good card. Second game, we could have mulliganed to five, and it could have been just uh, a shitty pile of that we had right now. I think our odds were better keeping this hand uh, and just going with it. And well, if you draw like this, well, okay, then it's over pretty soon. So no, this draft was horrible. Uh, the draft was horrible in itself. Uh, I don't think uh, there are a lot of good sta good decks in this draft. There's probably one good Earth deck, probably one good Boris deck, and the rest of the players will all have had piles jumbled together from fighting with each other. Um, so the draft was awkward, the games were awkward. Uh, this is immensely dissatisfying, especially for a video. Um, but you know, these are the downsides of magic, it just it just can't be helped. And I'm not going to leave it at this, I'm going to do a return to ref to get ref for you guys. Um, to put another bit of a perspective on the Temple vs. Scarlet Vantage uh, play. And um, well it's it's coming right behind so uh, so keep on watching for that draft. I hope that goes better. Hello everyone and welcome to the second draft for this video. Um, we're here in a return to Raftica draft because I needed a change of pace after the last match. And um, we are opening this booster and it already gives us a very good impression between the differences of tempo and card advantage uh, between gate crash and, um, and return to Raftica. If I look at these cards, all these cards are more expensive, uh, they do different stuff, none of them is putting as much pressure on your opponent as, as the, the average gate crash card does. Um, as for the booster itself, there are two cards that I really think are first pickable, which are the always welcome Rector Skilled Mage and the always powerful Supreme Verdict. Um, it's a bit of a, a tough choice, because I really like Rectus and Return to Raftica. If you've seen any of my older videos, you know that I really enjoy playing the deck. But um, I'm kind of hoping to hammer home the point between the difference of a card advantage and tempo. So I'm going to take Supreme Verdict, which is uh, one of the best cards to show how to make card advantage work. 
Uh, it's a removal spell. It's uh, a mass removal spell most of the time. And it uh, immediately sets us in the colors of white and blue, which are usually not as good tempo-wise, but are very good at taking control of a game in kind of advantage style. Um, that said, this is a return to Ravnica, and I'm not going to limit myself to the SRA skill because I know that's doomed to fail. Uh, I'm actually looking to just branch out into the Celestine build as well and have a bit of their, uh, of, of their specialty. Um, this booster doesn't offer us a whole lot. Um, a lot of cards are just, uh, are just regular cards, just regular creatures, things like that. We have Centaur's Accord, which is a nice card to have. Uh, it makes two Centaurs, which is a form of card advantage. Um, we have Stellar Songbirds, which is two creatures for the price of one. Uh, and we have Dramatic Rescue, which is a very good trick. But um, we're not looking for a very good trick right now. We first want to know what our deck is going to do. So the choice between the Curse of Accord and the Set of Songbirds, and because the Accord is two colors and the Set of Songbirds only one, I'm going to pick that one first. Uh, I don't mind ending up in, uh, in uh, Celestia and Azorius, but if I can just stick with Azorius, that's pretty fine with me. Okay, so here we have a lot of good Azorius cards. We have the Armor Guard, we have the Usar Patrol, we have Over Barrier, the Skill Gate, the Charm, Tower Dragon, and the Spell. Um, next to that we have Towering and Rick and the Red Reveler, which are pretty fine cards in their own right, and a second Guildgate and the fourth Guildgate. Guild Gate. The cards that really stick out, uh, I can narrow down to three. These are the Usar Patrol, the Azorius Charm and the Tower Drake. These are the three best cards for our deck at this moment. Um, I think Red Reveler actually might be the best card in this booster, but he's too black for our taste right now. Um, I have a little bit of a problem with the Azorius Charm because I think it doesn't do enough. Uh, it's okay, uh, it's a good, great constructed card. It's okay and limited, but it's just okay. Uh, cards that actually do something are Usar Patrol and Tower Drake. And I like Usar Patrol more than I uh, do like Tower Drake. This has something to do with the fact that it's uh, it's trick in a creature. Uh, it's very good just attacking. Uh, it's very good just blocking. And Tower Drake is a bit circumstantial. Uh, you need mana to make him work. He can't really, really win air battles, so I'm going to let him go and stick with it. Um, this booster is offering us... Uh, uh, once again, a uh, row of, of pretty fine cards. We have the Arrestor, we have the Removal Spell, um, there is a Gatekeeper Fire, the Phantom General, and the Trickery Fly. Uh, that said, I think I like the Arrestor best in this booster. It's uh, the <coughs> most aggressive card, uh, but incidentally also the best card at regulating the early game tempo for you. It locks down an attacker, buys you uh, an extra turn, and then it can block that attacker, and probably trade with it as well, because it's a 2-1 for 2 mana, and that those are just fine stats. Um, I'm going to take this card and uh, be very happy with it. And here we have another arrestor, also getting a very powerful Ogre Jailbreaker, um, which doesn't really uh, fit into this this deck at all. Um, and the rest of the cards are just just okay cards. Once again, it's a bit like the last booster. We have uh, the usual suspects for decks that are uh, they're looking for those cards, and we are happen to looking for a very arrestor. Okay, this is a very late Annihilating Fire. Uh, Annihilating Fire is first pickable. Uh, it's a really good card. It's a single color card. Um, I really don't mind pairing up Is it in my um, in my deck instead of Celestia. Um, although there is also a very powerful Civic Saber, which leads me to believe that this was a powerful booster. Uh, I don't think it is uh, powerful enough to let uh, Annihilating Fire go to a 6 pick, or Civic Saber go to a 6 pick, but it's very powerful indeed. Um, Civic Saber will certainly make the deck, but since we're not a tempo deck, it's going to be um, a little bit less powerful than any other cards. And I do like just uh, taking the light and fire, especially the blue in the in the Boros colored deck. Um, it's a bit of a gamble. It might not pay off, but you know I'm just counting on the fact that we might get some of those late gates. We seem to go later than in gate crash. Uh, and if not, then we'll just have an item side in our sideboard, and our opponent won't have it, and all we've lost is Civic Saber that would have been average in our deck anyway. Um, here's Tower Drake. I like this card. I like him more than Inspiration, uh, which is the contender. Uh, we could consider the Goblin Electromancer, but that would force us in a three color even deck because we already are a bit heavy on the white. And if I want to splash, if I want to take in red, then I want to splash the blue. <coughs> Here we get uh, Concordia Pegasus or the Esperia Skywatch. Cordia Pack is a very okay uh, early game uh, staller. Um, Esprit of Skywatch is, uh, is a late game finisher. Uh, since we already are pretty solid on the early game, I'm going to take the uh, Skyguard. And here we get another Skyguard, or Paralyzing Grasp. Paralyzing Grasp is a sort of removal spell. 
Um, and I, I really like it for what it does. Uh, it's it's okay. It's not incredibly good, but it just it shuts down most of the creatures that uh, that need to be shut down, and, and that's pretty okay. So I'm just going to take this out. Um, here we get the dramatic rescue to the table. I'm going to pick this card. I think this card is pretty good, uh, especially if you can use it with things like the arresters or the sort of songbirds, which actually give you another advantage. Uh, you can also use it to uh, return a creature of your opponent and gain a, a bit more of damage advantage. We get a corresponding gate, which is always nice. We get another sky guard, which is uh, probably okay. And I'm just going to take out this guy and this guard and the forest. Okay, so far we're settling into a notorious deck. Um, it's a bit sour. Yeah, I, d I don't like Azorius, but I do like how the deck is coming together. I'm hoping we can um, we can swerve a bit into Is it, but it's looking very unlikely with the blue cards you've already picked up. Uh, after the fire, we get Tower Trick, two Sky Guards, and Paralyzing Grasp, which are pretty fine cards and actually on color. So I think we're going to settle for those cards instead of the instead of the Annihilation Fire. Um, this booster is. Uh, Full of, of goodies. Uh, we have Nightly Valor, which is a good card. There are is also an Ezra Charm, a Snap Wound, um, and uh, there are a lot of cards that are okay, like Towering Indrick, the Burst on Monitor, the Rune uh, Wing, and uh, Rip on Defenses. I think for us, the Nightly Valor is the best card. It provides us uh, with uh, a little bit of late game power. It also is a solid form of card function that it brings uh, a bonus to the creature and the Night Token, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the Night Developer, and uh, and that's not not too too bad to open. Um, <coughs> here we get the uh, very powerful Shaman Collective Blessing, and um, that's just a really good card. It's uh, it's really powerful. All your creatures plus three, three. There are almost no main deck answers to an enchantment like this, and there are only so many sideboard answers for a Collective Blessing. So this card can usually just Bounce someone into dust, and um, for that appeal, I could take it. The alternative is taking Ice in the Sky, or Tristatus Judgment, or perhaps Sectionalizing Fire. I still see if we can force that red. That red is becoming less and less appealing. I haven't seen any good red cards uh, coming from the last booster anyway, so I don't really think I want that. Tristatus Judgment is a solid removal spell. Um, we already have two removal spells, which are pretty okay, we have a lot of detain, we have uh, a bit of curve going on, so I don't think I want to muddle my 6 drop with, uh, with a removal spell, so I think Ice and Sky is the best card to pick here. Uh, it provides us with two birds, they can do some air damage, and that's all pretty good. And the double green really is a heavy burden, even if we can go Slesnia, um, there is no guarantee that we can actually afford to put a double green card in our deck. Um, here we get uh, another copy of our uh, first pick. Nightly Feller, we also steal our secrets, which is a nice form of card advantage, especially if you can keep the board clear of creatures with uh, either Detain or Dramatic uh, Rescue, although using those cards is already the loss of a card to draw another card, and that's, uh, that's a, bit, uh, a bit of a downside. Um, there is a lot of good uh, Celestia in here, there's Centaur Healer, there's uh, uh, still some, uh, some Rectors coming through, with Spellotuck and Grim. Uh, Rest about there is Pursuit of Flight, which is always a favorite archetype of some players, uh, myself including. But I think the Knightly Valor is the card we want in this deck. Uh, it provides uh, a lot of late game advantage, and the Knight is is a considerable bonus to get next to your Fitness plus two plus two. So we're just taking it. <coughs> um, here we're getting uh, a Chromatic Lantern, which would actually make the Annihilating Fire feasible again. If we were to consider it, we also have the Trusted Assessment, which is the same rule spell we talked about a few picks back, and we have Azorius Justiciar. And Justiciar is a very awkward card in that um, it is very overpriced. The double detain is worth it. I mean, it, it's really good to lock up two creatures. It is a tempo swing that's enormous, and it's certain to, sets to swing the tempo back to you if you can make use of it. Um, that said, it's also 4 mana, and the bear it brings is pretty irrelevant at that point. So you need to make the most of that double detain, and if you're using it only as a defensive matter, that's a bit underwhelming. So I'm going to take first Tiny Judgment, and now that I have an extra removal spell, the fact that I took up Knight Defender and Ice in Skies means that we have a lot more to proliferate with, uh, which is, uh, or to uh, populate with, which is always good. Yeah, we're getting another size adjustment, but the real looker in this booster is this Sunspire Griffin. Um, as a 2-3 flyer, it's a very decent blocker, it's a very decent attacker, it is 
it does almost everything you want from it for its three mana cost and um, it's just one of those early game creatures that can really uh, hold the line for you so I'm going to take this and, uh, and I'm really happy to have it this booster is a bit more empty uh, the unplayable start to read around we have basically a decision between taking a random dork which we do not need at this point a very good combo trick that means fifth justice is if you've thought aerial uh, aerial maneuver was a good card in gate crash as uh, fifth justice is 10 times as good as aerial uh, aerial maneuver uh, it, it gives the same power bonus gives the same first strike but lifelink is so relevant that it's half the price that aerial maneuver is these things are all worth considering uh, then there is cancel which is uh, permission spell it uh, it's it's okay you know it, it's a card that you can have if you want to I think it would fit in this deck I think the Swift Justice would fit better so I'm going to take this as a combat trick <coughs> and this is uh, a booster with a rune wing a rune wing is another flying creature so I never mind having flying creatures and I'm just going to include it and in this booster we get um, the choice between armory guard or oh, well, once again the stupid slash sentry dork and bluster squall Blaster Scroll is uh, a pretty good card in that you can uh, blow out your opponent. But looking at what we have, we have Sunspire Griffin, we have a Tower Drake, we have a Rune Wing, we have the Spear Sky Guards. Um, all of the creatures already have flying. We don't need to tap out all of their blockers because there probably aren't going to be any blockers to tap uh, to block anyway. Uh, sure, if he's an army of Towering Indra, he might be in for a problem, but we have other problem, other answers for that. And just going to solidify our defenders. Uh, Armory Guard is really good, he can hold a lot of attacks um, and uh, if we have a few gates he can just attack for free back most of the time especially with his 5th Justice in tow so we can uh, take out his, his blockers that are ganging up on him um, This booster is pretty empty, I think the only card we might consider is the Mission Skin uh, it pro provides a bit of safety against the removal heavy deck that it's side of material <coughs> this booster brings us nothing. There are actually only two playables in this booster, which are the Cross the Monitor and the Sessna Guild Gate. And I'm going to take out the gate. If we find some juicy Sessna card, we might actually be able to splash it. Here we could take this spell as a sideboard card. I don't think that would, too bad. would be too bad. But I do like so much more to get this gate and see if we can get a green card uh, to fix it. Cross Guild Courier is a nice creature that can block. And the rest of the booster will be junk. I don't think Atlantic Fire will make this cut, so we're taking it out. And then we see we already have 19 playables and we can incorporate a green splash without trouble. Um, this is one of the big uh, differences between Return to Raftinga and Gate Crash. Um, the quality of the cards is just so much higher because they don't have to give up so much of the power level to be a tempo card. Um, the cards in Gate Crash are just all sacrificing so much to be as aggressive as possible. And these cards, they just don't do that. They say, fuck being aggressive. They say, I'm a 2-5 dude, and that's it. And if you look at the 4-mana four, four attacking creatures of Gate Crash, um, you'll soon be ending up with um, creatures that don't have 7 combined power and toughness. Um, things like Sunspire Griffin are really good blockers. They can take out almost all 2 and 3 drops of Gate Crash without problem. Um, not only a few of them will take the Griffin with him, like the Vojic Halberdier, the things like Bomber Corpse, and uh, War, uh, War Might Infantry. These cards just can't beat a Griffin. Um, back to this booster. And it sees that having two Slashner Guild Gates actually paid off. We're getting the very good Slashner Charm, but the even better Viticasi Guild Mates. This guy is a game plan on itself. And especially since we're going to hope that the game goes long, either because he is answering our flyers and we can't win, or we're stalling up the board with all these great defensive cards that we have. And this guy can break a stalemate like no one else can. Um, I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to make this our end game plan and I'm really happy that we took up these two gates and made this possible. Um, this booster uh, gives us a whole range of options. Uh, we have an additional flyer if you wanted to. We have another card that would be great on the splash, although I don't think that Wayfaring Temple is something we're looking for right now because it's a bit more of an aggressive card than I'm willing to commit to. Um, especially since we don't have any other ground creatures that can make use of the fact that this is a huge attacker that needs to be blocked. Uh, we do have enough cards to uh, populate with him, we have the two Nightly Fathers and the Ice Disguise, set our Songbirds and now the Guild Mage. Um, the alternative is taking one of the Fixers, we have Zerus Guild Gate, the Transcult Promenade or the Call of the Conclave, which is not a 2-drop in our deck. Um, but still, if it's a 4-mana Centaur, that's a bit underwhelming, if we can get it earlier than that, that's pretty fine. 
but is that enough payoff or should we just take a solid creature like the courier the stealer or the rune wing that's really the question uh, since we're out looking to just stall a bit until we get either a board swipe or this I'm not really sure but um, I think just having an early game creature is better than having um, a, a card that might be okay but probably won't be um, here we have a lot of cards that are really good but not bad deck. We have uh, Spell Attack, we have Joker and uh, Guildmate. Um, but our choices are pretty much narrowed down to taking the Stealer of Secrets or the Cancel and the Syncopate. Uh, there is also another Armory Guard but we are already stocking up on the 4 drops. We have uh, another 4 drop here. Um, and uh, I'm not really keen on taking another one, especially if there is an alternative that it could be considered better like the Syncopate or the Stealer of Secrets. Um, the syncopate is a counter spell, it's much more versatile than a cancel. Uh, it has potential to cost one mana less. Um, but then again, the longer the game goes on, the worse this card becomes. So it, it's a bit of a what are you aiming for scenario. That said, I don't like either of these counter spells. I like the Cedar Secrets more. I actually like that. Sorry, it's Guildgate more than the counter spells. And I'm going to go for the of Secrets in the hope that it will just be a good enough blocker, or at the very least be enough to. Uh, uh, to draw me a card once in a while. Uh, this is Surprising Booster. We are getting a lot of cards that I consider to be insanely good. Uh, Frostbound Weird and Fight Wielder. There are also Pursuit of Flight and Lubber Crew, which I think are very good cards. There is still a Vinus or Songbird, which are pretty okay cards. Archer is going to be between the Frostbound Weird and the Fight Wielder. Um, I like Fight Wielder. I like Frostbound Weird. Uh, they are both one force. The first one weird is a bit more aggressive. It has a bit more options. It can attack and block, um, depending on what you want it to do. Void Wielder uh, is basically just a very defensive card, hoping to control the tempo of the game by sending a big attacker away. Uh, away. Uh, he can also solve some of the RS that could be problem, uh, could be causing problems like Pursuit of Flight or Deep Glee. But that said, we already have a lot of aggressive creatures, and I think Frost and Weird could just complement these creatures so well. Um, just having him on turn 2 and then following it up with Azorius Arresters or uh, um, with uh, a couple of fires so that he can be blocking those are just very good options here we're getting a bit of a, of a strange choice we still have power fires in the form of Tower Drake and less powerful but still okay Rune Wing we have another slash on Guildgate if we really feel insecure about our fixing and we have Growing Ranks as a bomb rare and Growing Ranks is a card that has potentially do nothing which makes it a little bit awkward in my book but that said we need to look at our token creators we have a set of songbirds we have an ice in the skies with two knighted feathers and don't forget to feed the guys guild mace those are five is five enough i think it's borderline i think this card has the potential to do a whole lot of nothing in this deck so i'm going to just skip it and take tower drake which has the potential to do a whole lot of ravaging in our deck <coughs> this booster brings us uh, a couple more um, aggressive cards or temp controlling cards. We have the Keening Apparition, we have the Erection Injunction, we have the Fairy Imposter. Uh, there's still a common bond in here, which is a perfectly fine trick, but not what we're looking for. And then in the Guild Gate, which I'm not surprised by, since the gates are pretty much considered to be worthless on Magic Online in this set. Um, that said, we already met our quota for playables. We are just, just curving it out now, seeing what we want, what we don't want. An X Injunction is a very aggressive card that I don't think is very good in this deck because um, even though we have a lot of aggressive creatures, they, a lot of them are flying and they can just attack without problems. Keening Apparition might help us out, uh, out of a bind and if we come across the, the growing ranks too passed or maybe one of the power hours. I'm taking this. I think it's a bit better than Crossdown Courier anyway, so it'd probably be main deck instead of the Courier. Um, here we're getting the Transkill Promenade. We could take the other Armory Guard, but I'd rather just take Fixer. The fact that it uh, takes a away a two slot is uh, is not that bad. Um, we can always play it later. I mean, it's it's purely to fix our feet to get get healed mage in, um, and I'm worth to sacrifice uh, some late uh, turn mana to get uh, some more value out of my guild mate. Here we're getting a pretty funny Zarp Patrol. I like this Zarp Patrol. It's a solid card. I think it's a little bit better than our regard. Here has another Zarp Patrol and another Swift Justice. And this is really comes down to personal preference, I think. We already have two patrols. We are stuck to our four drops, but we can always just fit another patrol because it's really good. Swift Justice is a good trick, but I think neither of these cards will actually make a very big impact on our deck since it already is looking so very solid. I'm going to take the Swift Justice because it's a bit better against the aggressive decks in just taking out uh, some early game stuff uh, in, in, a, in a fairly equal trade. 
And here we have two fixing lands and a rune wing. I don't want another transco promenade. Uh, I don't think rune wing is going to take decks. I'm going to take this Irish Guild Gate and and the other is Irish Guild Gate and the Void Wielder, which is stabling for some reason. And uh, I think it's uh, pretty much showing that uh, this format ha is not being drafted a lot anymore. Um, if I can look at this deck, I've never had an Azorius deck like this before. Uh, in when everybody was drafting Return to Ravnica, people didn't pass around the Void Wielders like they were dirt. Uh, people, I, I knew the gates were going to be late, but having five on crawler gates and a promenade is ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of these players are just in it for, hmm, let's see what this set is, and not really realizing what they should be doing, or at least be out of shape enough to not really, um, to not really know how this format worked. I mean, if you're still thinking that this is a tempo format like Gate Crash, then you're going to be so incredibly disappointed with your deck at the end, because the cards are just so much better. Imagine having Swift Justice in your Orsoft deck, instead of having Smite or having uh, Aerial Maneuver. I think of all the games you could have won against the Aggressive Cruel and Boros decks because your creature got lifelink instead of flying and because your creature, um, because your, your trick cost only one mana instead of two. This card is so incredibly good against the tempo deck. And people just don't realize that Gatecrash doesn't have these cards. It has less good cards. It has better tempo cards. These are the tempo cards of this format. We are talking generic two power creatures for two mana with a, uh, a minor ability while Gatecrash is filled with things like Wojciech Helper Deers uh, and a Skimran Goblin which are also two drops but with more power or with more relevant abilities. This format ju just doesn't work that way. Uh, returning to the deck we have 29 cards lying here which is obviously too many. Uh, we have six non-basic lands lying here and I wonder if we want to play them all. Uh, because we still can get awkward draws in which we only have to play tap lands and can play our 2 drop on turn 2 which is a bit disappointing especially if we're taking the tempo route so I'm just uh, filtering out the tricks right here this is our removal spell uh, this is everything we want to play on curve and here we have paralyzing grasp and um, looking at this I see that we can go both ways we can go for the controllers deck trying to um, earn ourselves some card advantage, uh, do some damage flyers and then finish it with bigger flyers basically. Uh, we can also go for the tempo deck trying to overpower our opponent with the uh, boatload of two power dorks that we have at the beginning of the curve and then taking the flyers to town when these creatures become irrelevant at top by one of the one of the bigger creatures of the format. Um, in any case we'll always have Vito Gazi guildmates to fall back on um, which is pretty much a game breaker if you ask me. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to at least get rid of the Paralyzing Grasp. We're going to be attacking no matter what the creatures who want to get rid of are things like Towering Indrick, perhaps Closing Flyers, and they are on blocking duty anyway because we will be doing a lot of the attacking I foresee. Um, I think we have uh, too much late game for this deck, so I'm going to take out the Armory Guard. The Armory Guard, uh, we might board him in if we see a deck with a lot of Ogre Tail Breakers or something like that. I think the Sarp Patrol is just a better card too. Uh, the Flash and the Vigilance are really relevant, even though this guy might as well just have Vigilance printed on him with these five gates we're having. Um, Ice in Disguise is better than both of those cards because it provides two creatures instead of one and it provides an attacking angle. Um, then we'll just move on. We have Here we have these seven two drops, which is fine if you're playing uh, a really aggressive deck, but I think it's a little bit much for us. I'm going to cut at least one, but I think two Crosstown Couriers. Um, and we'll still have a decent amount of 2 drops, we'll have enough to do in turn 2 um, but these cards are just all better, they all have uh, better abilities uh, there's still a courier in here because I like 5 as the number of 2 drops to have so that, that's all okay um, we'll be ending up, we have uh, 6 lands so it's 25 spells, it's still uh, too too many and I think uh, I'm going to cut in well, I would want to cut in one of these tricks but I like them all so much and I think they're so good and they're also very good at controlling the tempo of the game making sure the game goes late, make sure we have the time to play out in Nightly Valor with Spiria Skywatch and win the game with that um, I see we have Stellar Secrets here, we don't have any real options to make Stellar Secrets shine the best thing we can do is slap a Nightly Valor on it and hope that it's big enough to survive the combat I think that's just not good enough we have to take it out, I like the other 3 drops better 
Um, they all provide a f an attacking flyer in the case of South Songbirds, it's a small flyer, but at least they have a block that attacks in the form of the Cellar itself. And that leaves us with just one card to go. And looking at this deck, I really think we don't need two Skywatches. I think two Skywatches is just asking for um, having a six drop in your starting seven. That's uh, a dead draw, a card you probably won't be able to cast in a long while, and I want to reduce that chance. So I'm going to take that out. I think the Knightly Valor on one of these creatures will be enough to, uh, to turn the tide. I think that Supreme Verdict or Fidu Gazi Guild Mage can win us a game or two, simply by being such a powerful card. Um, and I think the rest of the deck is just good enough to handle things on its own. It doesn't need two Sky Guards at the end of the deck to just uh, handle the heavy shit for him. And even so, the problems that are presented to this deck, things like Tower and Drake, are not solved by Spree as Skywatch. It will run into an Indrik just as much as the Sinspire Griffin will. Um, it will not be able to get rid of a Desecration Demon. Sure, it will stall at one turn, but so does Azorius Arrestor, and it doesn't come with a prime price of 6 mana. Um, so, no, it's not really the answer we're looking for, it's just a generic big flyer, and I expect it to shine because it's a 3-3 and will deal 1 damage more than the Sunspire Griffin and the Tower Drakes. Uh, so, having to really seems too much. Well, onto the mana base. We have um, 6 non basic lands here, which I don't want to play all 6 because of the aforementioned reasons. It really wrecks with your curve, you need to play, come play tap lands. Um, that said, uh, I want to play the 3 lands that give green anyway. That it would be a lot easier for a guild mage, it means we don't even have to play uh, a forest if we don't want to. Which I think is a very comforting thought. Which means we're going to cut us various guild gates. Um, actually, I think 6 is only borderline too many, so I'm going to cut only 1. Uh, with 12 come to play untapped lands, I think we can <coughs> pretty much assure that our deck has a come to play untapped land on turn 2. And probably on turn 3, and that's good enough. Uh, these cards are all pretty good at, uh, at taking a stab at, at an empty turn. Um, if we have 3 lands, we play Tower Drake, and then on our turn we can't play Hussar Patrol because we have come to play that land. That's completely okay. We also could have a second 2 drop, a second 3 drop, to just make something out of it. Um, and um, even still, the Tower Drake can use that excess mana to just pump itself up and be a decent blocker. And then wait for a Star Patrol. It's not like we're going to win this race. We're just going to take it slowly through the air. We're going to take it on our Nightly Valors. We have all the time in the world. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's uh, that's pretty fine to have five of these lands. That means we have 12 uh, basic lands. We don't display any forests because we have already three green sources. That's okay. Um, so we're going to divide up the rest 50-50. Uh, now we have to consider that we have two Celestia Guild Gates, which are white sources. The Azurus Guild Gates don't count, as does the Transcult Promenade, so we already have two white sources, um, meaning that it would be 7-5 in Blue's favor. And I'm, um, I'm pretty okay with that. Uh, it means having 12 white sources, it means having uh, uh, sorry, 10 white sources and 9 blue sources, and that's okay. No, I'm still miscounting, it's 12 white sources. Sorry, it's, uh, it's better if you visualize everything like this. So now we can see we have 7 islands, 2 gates, and 10 blue sources. We have the 7 planes and the 5 lands that give white, it's 12 white sources. It's a pretty fine, uh, it's pretty fine, yeah, it, it works. This, is, this deck is, uh, I feel a lot more comfortable with this deck in order to the rafting than I did with the previous deck in Gate Crash. So, let's see how these games go. Just going to submit this deck, we were the last one to submit, I already suspected as much. And um, I'm not going to, uh, to take a break here, I'm just going to wait for the game to start and take your ride in it. And here we go. Uh, we want the die roll. Yes, we want to play first. Could consider taking the draw with this deck. Um, wouldn't be a shame, and if they are playing a slower deck, um, it, you could even consider it, but I think if they play a slower deck, they will have a little bit better late game, so just take advantage of all the two drops you have. This hand is a bit clunky, uh, we have a lot of the late game cards, uh, we have the Frostborn which we can cast, but I'm really confident with our mana, um, with how our mana base works. So I'm going to keep this hand because we already have a pretty fine setup. And if we, if we, ca if we don't draw a land to play Frostborn Weird next turn, 
then maybe we can play it a turn after and it, it doesn't lose value the longer the game goes on it still is it's, it's a decent creature um, so yeah I'm pretty okay with this hand <coughs> okay, but since we're playing a Bulgari deck Bulgari decks are known for the speed and here we have Sasha Guildgate it's actually fine to do it right now since now we can bluff uh, drawing the gate and having a slow hand uh, with three drops, but just want to play the gate to fix Armada and maybe throw him off a bit. He still hasn't done anything. Um, being Golgari with green means that he can have Towering Indrix. I'm still going to play the Rune Wing because I think it's the best creature that has a chance of attacking next turn. We could wait for his Star Patrol, but anything he's going to play at this point can play his Star Patrol. So anything but Towering Indrix would be good. Here's Cross the Monitor. That would have certainly blocked the Star Patrol, so the Rune Wing was the right choice. Draw an extra island, so now we can even take a gamble and put a knightly valor on the rune wing and start taking out those damages. I think it's a good option. It'll probably hit a removal spell, but that's okay because rune wing trades itself back. We already have done the four damage, we still hold on to the knight and he loses his tempo up next turn by having to play the removal spell. Um, I think that's all worth it, so I'm just going to put the valor on. And we still have all these cards as our backups if, uh, if he does take out the rune wing, and if he doesn't have an answer for we will have a very solid attacker. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that we're not going to walk across the monitor if it's attacking because this set is riddled with combat tricks and he's playing air prediction main deck. That's bad news for us but uh, not really uh, a problem because it does all the aforementioned things. It takes out the tempo, it's still a one-on-one -on -one trade in cards, we are still even up night. And uh, we drew the very reliable tower drake to return a favor with. So we're just going to send in the knight which is not a two damage. And uh, then we have the option of uh, playing the Void Wheel to take out even more of its tempo. Uh, play the Frostman Weird uh, or Ordinary Star Patrol, which can block us across the monitor, or play the Tower Drake, which puts on a bit more tempo on his side. Um, the Tower Drake would be the best option if you're trying to race this. But that said, it's the worst option mana wise because it's 3 mana, it means we leave uh, 2 mana open, which is nothing it can't block the monitor. Um, and those are all bad things. So I think I'm just going to wait, see if he swings with the monitor, try to block with his Harp Troll, see if I can pull out a trick. Uh, I don't mind trading it for a trick because once more it'll eat up his tempo if he has to. Uh, here comes Chrissy Salvage, I'm okay with that. Five cards and three field sound, so I better open it up. And wow, he's playing red in this deck. Um, so yeah, he uh, didn't, he couldn't pick the Speed Phasm, he didn't take the Herald, he couldn't take the Lantern, he didn't take Lover Crew, so he took Rubble Belt Rhino, which is good news for us, uh, in a way, because it's just a 3 power attacker, which we can easily manage with this deck. Uh, it's bad news in a way that Kogari is really good with Rubble Black Rhino, as if there comes, uh, if one of the spells comes around, uh, one of the, the, the scavenge uh, cards, then it'll be a very big Rhino, and we don't have any answers to that, so need to take care of that. But that said, it's a 5 mana creature, so if he does have a trick that isn't giant growth, then he can play the Rhino. But he doesn't have a trick, so he actually get to keep our Usar Patrol, and I'm pretty happy with this turn of events. Um, the Rhino is pretty much preventing us from, uh, from attacking. It will kill the knight if we do. So that's a bit of a bummer. We can detain it or fight builder it, so in that case it's, uh, it's a very uh, nasty card to, to be there. Um, that said, I'm just going to play this Rear Skywatch. <coughs> I want to have the big attacker right now. Um, I don't think detaining cross the monitor is, uh, you know, the best thing to happen right now. But it's it's just it comes with the cards, and I'm not saying no to it. Um, he is playing red. He's playing Lobberquin Street Spasm. Now I can understand why people would splash Street Street Spasm. Um, Lumber Crew is a little bit less splashable, so I'm thinking it might be a little bit more than a splash in his red side, so he could be holding red cards that he can cast. And that's um, <coughs> that's the fun for us as well, of course. So let's just see how it goes for him now. He has stab wounds. Putting it on this pretty sky watch. So we have the void wheel, so we can get rid of the stab wound. Especially since I think there's going to be a long grindy game in which he's going to try to break through our defense and we need a fires to make this work. Um, 
I think that this is a good option. There are no critters yet, so I really definitely want to bounce. Oh yeah, we have traumatic rescue, that might actually be better than the Void Wielder. Um, at least it gives us uh, the chance to also play Tower Drake this turn. So it's attacking with Skywatch. It's free damage. And then I'll... Uh, <coughs> I'll put in the Tower Drake. at the end of his turn we'll send the Skyguard back to our head. So we don't take any damage from uh, from stab wounds, we can just use Tower Drake to keep the tempo on. Replay the Skywatch and uh, make the uh, Monitor do nothing. This, this is the problem with Rumbleback Rhino, we can't kill his Monitor or his Scorpion or his Rhino will be really big. So we're going to try and attempt to kill that Rhino every chance we get. But unfortunately since he's playing Golgari he has all access to the combat tricks and I don't really think we're getting all that, that much chances to kill the Rhino. <coughs> but still, we have a lot of jumpers still in hand. Um, the only trick that gives Trumpers is Might Concord, uh, or Might co uh, Conclave, and uh, we still have a lot of high toughness cards that can just go right in front of the road without right uh, problems. to do I'm going to take five damage. Um, I'm just going to throw the jump from here. I could make the knight and the tower break up as well. And then he has to refuse straight but some if he gets giant broke you don't get to kill him. And he gets to kill two other creatures. And the knight and tower break where he's out from the knight the other way he wants and that's a well, kind of a big loss and even though he still has all these backup cards, I'm not really fond of that kind of trade. Um, so I'm just putting this up for maybe he doesn't play Jack Road and we can just bring him back and everything. Uh, we're not going to lose his rate on damage, just his staff will be removed next turn and we'll still have to get the blockers. Uh, if he does, if he doesn't unleash this, that's okay. We can still attack with our fiction creatures. Um, and this guy won't be able to do anything as an attacker right now because he's only 1-1. Okay, so this worked. We run out of island. So we'll just attack with everything. And he'll take four damage. He can block one of these for free. That's okay. Maybe he even thinks it's worth using a trick right now, like Giant Grove to kill the Usar Patrol. That's also okay, but I think he's just yeah, he's just going to regenerate and uh, leave it at that. I mean that's what the Grim Master is supposed to do if it does that counter. Um we'll replay the Spear Skywatch. We could also consider playing the Void Wielder. And the Crosstown Courier, uh, two at the same turn. But I really want to clock him as soon as possible. So I want him to feel the pressure we're putting on him. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to replay the Skywatch. It can uh, hold his monitor. And we still have decent blockers for his attack. <coughs> Well, we can block the Rhino with everything now, because now we have enough creatures to kill it if he has Giant Growth. Um, if he does have Might Conclave, then we're in the same situation where he gets to kill two of our creatures instead of... Uh, uh, and then we still don't get to kill the Rhino, which is unfortunate. Uh, I'm not going to block the Scorpion either way, so that's coming through. And I think it might not even be a bad idea to trade after Rhino, because it frees us up to kill all the other annoying creatures. Um, so I'm going to take the gamble here that he doesn't have the, the Might Conclave. Even if he does, uh, making a block like this and losing to uh, Giant Growth is a complete waste of your creatures. But losing it to Might of the Conclave, that card can actually swing the game in his favor if we're not careful. It will complicate our block situations. Uh, luckily he doesn't have it and he just trades the Rhino for the Spirit of Skywatch. Uh, the Trestle Troll uh, is a bit of a downer on that point, but that can't really be helped. Uh, we'll just have to wait for another attacker. I mean, it can't kill the Tower Drake. I'll just play out this one. I'll, uh, I'll keep the Void Builder in return for something big that comes along. Or perhaps for um, when he 
uh, when, he, when he does have powerful auras or something like that to just get rid of that aura and be done with it. Uh, now we're going into stillmate, this definitely is an aura advantage. Now I don't mind taking out the scorpion for a knight. I mean, he can use Sluice Bay Scorpion to make the Trust Fall bigger, but that's what we have to fight Builder for. He's getting access to his red mana. So now he can play out his powerful red cards. <coughs> and um, let's see what, what he's playing it for. And if he's now. He, the cards like Lobber Crew would be really good right now. Street, street Spasm, not so much. Because um, we all have these, these high toughness cards. and. Uh, and he's putting the counters on the Corrosion Monitor, that's okay. We have a Tower Drake that can pretty much survive that Monitor. <coughs> Good even consider throwing everything in front of it. And he can only kill one of our guys and the Monitor will die. We have to put counters on the Trestle Troll, about the Trestle Troll and nothing happened. So, I'm not really concerned about the Monitor at all. You can even have a trick because the Frostman Weird can up its power and still match that trick. Even if Smite the Conclave and Giant Growth, they're just not good enough. So the only thing it could have at that point is a removal spell for the Frostman Weird. And then uh, you'll get a 2 for 1 that's removal spell by killing the Jar Patrol and Frostman Weird. And then we'll just use the Void Wheel when we turn the status quo. Also, if you're wondering why I haven't played Cross and Courier, um, we still have Stream Verdict in our deck, and that still is one of the cards that I'm hoping that can uh, save us if this game turns this way. But the way he's playing it, um, I don't really think that he has any long-term plans, that he's just doing what he thinks is right at the moment, just thinking things through. Just like this attack, this, this probably isn't a very good attack of his, unless he has a removal spell. Then again, which removal spell would he have to kill a Frostburn Weird? And there you get to see it. And it's Launch Party, and that's okay. So he kills the, the Weird with Launch Party. And I'll just make sure our Tower Drake survives this. Uh, this, is, this is enough to make it survive, 2 3. Yeah, I guess that's the first marker, right? Yeah. And here we draw our end game. Um, I'm first going to make sure that we are going to survive to reach that end game. So I'm playing the Void Wielder, sending back his across the monitor. Yes, I just used that ability. I'm not playing the Guild Mage right now uh, because I can't activate it. If I wait for it to turn, I can activate immediately for Centaur. <coughs> and that's at least if he has a removal spell, then we at least still have Centaur. Uh, we have 4, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. So, hop, here we go. And he desperately needs to draw a Rubble Spawn now for the Guild Mage. If he doesn't have it, uh, he's just going to lose to the Endless Fruit of Centaurs that we're going to produce. And it doesn't look like he, ha like he has one, because he would have used it by now. I think he drew the x Guardian, he's going to make fake attack with Cross the Monitor. Um, it would be okay, we would just block it with the, with the Void Wielder. You could also throw in the Tower Drake or perhaps make a Centaur and block it with that. And those are all fell turns in which you lose across the monitor. And I don't think that's something he can afford right now. More land is always good, even though we already have enough land to make two Centaurs turn. And he probably drew his Swamp as well. And now we're just going to, uh, to go on the populate here. Yeah, with that Centaur. I'm I'm comfortable using populate instead of the make a centaur outright. Um, even though we have the mana to do both, because if he does want to try and trick me and have a removal spell, we can also spawn the removal spell by making another centaur, and um, and then populating that centaur. So that's all okay. Um, at this point, he has only one blocker that can decently take out the centaur. So I'm going to send all the centaurs and tower drake in. If he blocks the trestle troll, we can always pump tower drake for one. It doesn't make us lose. Centaur found this on the guild mage, and he can decently block these guys. Of course, trading in his cross the monitor is uh, um, is okay, so he can make first fall big enough to actually bash centaurs to death. But you know that's that's what we have. Sorry, Sylvester, for we just threw that guy. He's going to uh, 
take out that troll. If, he t he's, if he's using 7 mana to uh, to make his troll fat, he's probably not going to play another decent blocker, which means the two centaurs that are coming in to attack next turn as well. It's going to overwhelm him. And so it, it happens. So this game we were in full control. Uh, he had no tempo to speak off. And we used that to our advantage by just waiting for the more powerful card in this match, which was Vita Guys Guild Mage. Um, we saw a bit of removal, so we might board in the mission skins. That said, all of his removal was kind of shaky. He had uh, the street spasm, he had a lunch party. Um, he has all of this late game, and I'm not really, um, not really afraid of this late game. The only thing I want to board is the Paralyzing Grasp. So I can take care of one of those uh, one of those creatures that I don't want to don't want to to die on him. So you can use the counters to make something big. And I'm going to take out. Well, I saw one Trestle Troll. I didn't saw any Towering and Rick, so I'm not really afraid of those cards. Um, I was a little bit unimpressed with the Zarp Troll since it, uh, it it couldn't attack pretty well, but it did block pretty well. But we have other cards for that, so I'm going to take one of the trolls out. Take Paralyze and Grasp in. They fill somewhat the same role anyway, so. Very submitted. Um, he's getting to start. That's no problem. We get an extra card. <coughs> and here we have this hand. This hand is pretty okay. Um, it needs some work, but we're in a draw. Uh, we actually we need an island to make the word we get work, and we need to draw something to keep us in the game later on. The Swift Justice and the Arrestor will just keep us in the game early on, and that's that's good enough for now. He doesn't have a very aggressive deck anyway. Yes, Transfer Promenade. Um, I probably should have played the island. If we were lucky enough to draw another island, we can probably play the Frostburn Rear 10. That would have been a whole lot better, so yeah, I'm going to uh, put this on a misclick off my side. We don't draw the island, so no harm done. We'll just play the Transfer Promenade. His start is decent with uh, the guild gate fixes his mana, Centaur's Herald. Uh, he's probably going to use that Herald to uh, make Centaur at the end of the turn, which our Frostman Weird this morning capable to handle. And here it is. And the, the presence of the Supreme Verdict so early in the game. Uh, really is an advantage for us. Uh, now we can play around Supreme Verdict, not overloading the board, waiting for him to pile on card upon card upon card to break through our walls like Frostman and Weird and, uh, and uh, the Ice in the Skies. We can trade his fifth justice for very profitable uh, deals if he is trying to attack through our walls. And then when he is just overloading on everything, he's using up his cards, we'll throw in a Supreme Verdict and we'll come out with the creatures we've been saving and just basically win the game. That's, that's the plan that we're having right now. So any draw is pretty much good. We can need a couple more lands, so we have more tempo after the verdict. Uh, we could use a couple more creatures, so we actually have something to do after the verdict. And those are all okay. Um, he's once again not unleashing his rest about. He also missed his fourth land drop. Um, these are good things for us. I'm going to play the island. I'm going to play the ice in the sky at the end of the turn. And uh, I'm going to start counter attack, putting some pressure on him, forcing him to take action to do something. Uh, there's x -Pain Guardian, which is probably the card he's, uh, he's waiting for to fix up his mana. Yeah, I want to uh, this one. Now we could uh, play the Azorius Arrestor and lock his Guardian down for a turn, but that's not the game plan we're at. We're not at trying to stall him, we're actually at trying to make him do as much as possible as he can. So I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to Arrestor later on to either buy us one more turn to sit on Supreme Verdict. Um, or to just have it after Spring Verdict. I mean, those are both better situations than just locking down his Guardian for a turn. <coughs> and we, we even saw some of the cards that he could play. If he's now coming out with a Fast Troll or a Lobber Crew, those are cards that, um, that simply don't do anything for him right now. He is actually skipping on it. He's not doing, uh, doing anything at all. You could put the Nightly Valor on a bird, but we did saw the Aerial Predation, we did see uh, the launch party, so I'm actually not really that confident to play Nightly Valor when he's open like that. He's even since we know that he has to have cards that he can play, uh, it's not like he's just, uh, just sitting on a bunch of lands or anything, because he would have played those lands. He has spells, and he is going to play those spells. I don't know what he was waiting for last turn, I'm convinced that he had something to do. 
Here's Lover Crew. I think that was his option last turn as well because he tapped the extra Guardian already. And um, well, I don't mind him having Lover Crew. It's uh, it's a let him have it scenario. I mean, we're still out racing him with the birds, so he needs to do something else besides Lover Crew to win this game. We have Dramatic Rescue with two uh, Swift Justices to get uh, a lot of uh, life advantage if we need to. And um, well, we're just we're just basically holding holding everything back right now. We're just stockpiling it all up. He's not doing anything in return. He has four cards. We have seven. We have the very powerful Stream Verdict. So now he's just waiting what he's going to do. Six, seven mana. And here we have Terrace Worm. And Terrace Worm is uh, is pretty fine. I mean, it's uh, it's okay. You can have Terrace Worm. We'll just send in the birds again. And uh, we could play Supreme Verdict now, but I actually want to be a little bit greedy and let him have another turn. So I'm going to stall up the Terrace Worm, play another blocker. Uh, actually, the Arrestor might give us two turns in that it can arrest it now and block it next turn. Uh, his board is not changing. Uh, without the Terrace Worm, he still doesn't have a fresh to pull through. The birds are racing him, so I wanted to answer these birds before I'm going on Supreme Verdict mode. Uh, we could have played a Knightly Valor, it would have done roughly the same as the Arrestor, but I want to save the Valor for post Supreme Verdict advantage as much as I can. Uh, here comes the launch party, he's taking out the Frostburn Weird. I'm okay with that. <coughs> Stacking with the Centaur, I'm going to use one of the Swift Justices to get even more advantage out of this. And he might have a Street Spasm now and destroy the Azorius Arrestor and that's totally fine by me. We just drew another card, we drew a powerful removal spell. He has one card left in hand and we are going to have six or one of them to land. So we're just going to send in these birds um, and I'm just going to take out support with Supreme Verdict. This leaves him with absolutely nothing. He still has a Terrace Worm in his graveyard and he has one card in hand. Uh, the very worst case scenario is, is that that card is Rollback Rhino and it will become an 8 time Rollback Hexproof Rhino. But it isn't. Uh, he's probably holding a land, maybe a removal spell. Uh, I draw the very tiny rune wing, which I prefer playing over Spirit of Skywatch. <coughs> Simply because if he does he have the aerial predation then uh, the rune wing can um, can, um, can can do better things to that. And the ability of the Skywatch of course isn't wasted right now because now we can detain the travel fall for a turn. Which means that it can block he'll take two damage to the rune wing and that's two extra damage that we've done. Uh, it's already targeted first of all. And here comes Rune Wing. Now we still have the Dramatic Rescue to save any of these two, two creatures from uh, Aerial Predation if he has it. And he has Assassin Strike. Well, I'm certainly going to save it from that. It gives us another, uh, another shot at Detain, which is pretty good. There's another Nightly Valor. Which is a better option, I'm thinking right now. So I'm just slapping this on the Rune Wing. E there is no removal spell for one black or one green mana that can stop us from doing this. Um, the Trust Troll can block Rune Wing because it'll die, so it deals 4 damage. Uh, we get the extra knight, so he needs an another blocker to get rid of that knight. And now he's just low on life. We still have Skywatch to invalidate one of his cards. <coughs> and he's stepping out more mana. He does have the Aerial Predation. That's okay. I'll just get a new card, which is an island. Um, and now let's see, we can play another Knightly Feller uh, and then attack, and then he has to lock across the monitor, which is uh, which is pretty fine. Uh, you could, of course, not block it and, and take the damage, which is also fine. You could block with both, and you will just play his fifth justice, take a Test Trussel Troll, and it's free a Skywatch to the rest. Right now our options are looking pretty good and his options are looking uh, are looking less and less good every minute. And there it is. Trust is going to die. I'm taking some life in the process which is pretty irrelevant as well. 
Now he just has the Molotov. He knows we have Skywatch, so the Molotov won't be able to block next turn. He needs to have another blocker, and that blocker needs to be able to survive the night attack. Well, it's a second cross the Molotov. So we'll just play the Skywatch. <coughs> we'll lock down one of his monitors, and we'll attack him. Uh, he can either choose to take four damage, uh, go to two and kill a knight, or he can take choose to jump the knight and take two damage, go to four. I prefer this scenario because now he disappears. Sky watches people in a single turn, so he needs to remove spell for this. He doesn't. This matches ours. Um, Okay, so that's it. Uh, it. It worked pretty well. We were the last to finish, so we're immediately zooming uh, forward to the second game. So once more, I'm not going to break out this time. Um, I think this game went, uh, or this match went pretty well. The deck did what we wanted to do. Um, it gave uh, a really nice image of the contrast of how Return to Rathco was and how Gatecrash is. Um, uh, against the gate crash deck, I think this Azorius deck wouldn't have been as good. It still had a lot of good quality cards, but the overwhelming power of the fat semi creatures or the the, the similar synergy of the um, of the Boris Battalion that you can't just stop with a white and blue deck. Um, it would have been overpowering. Uh, sitting on a frostman weird for a couple of turns like that. Uh, against uh, the blazingly fast decks, it's not going to be good enough. They have solid answers for that. And even though solid answers are present in this format as well, uh, this Golgari deck just couldn't put enough power up behind those answers to um, to fit uh, to fit one in comfortably. I mean, the, the Boris Battalion probably gets something like Martial Glory to play around uh, the the first one weird, or have act of treason, or have march for death, or anything like that, or even maybe he can just attack with his battalion creatures, and uh, knowing that one of those is going to survive the first one weird, the other two will do damage. And um, those are very different combat scenarios. Uh, playing defensively like this in gate crash doesn't really work out for people very well, um, but it does in Return to Raftica. The cards are more powerful. The format is slower. Uh, the card advantage really is key here. I think that's a verdict. He had nothing. He was drawing off the top to survive our onslaught, and we had four cards up on him. Uh, he still he had outs. I mean, let's face it. If he had drawn removal and removal, then we would s we would be on par. But still, he would be at six life. He would be at 23, and all he would have was a single cross the monitor uh, to finish us off, which gives us an insane amount of time to draw anything that can deal the, the last six damage to him. So. Um, yeah, I, I was pretty comfortable about those games. I didn't feel like we were in danger at any point. And that's what the card front side of Magic is about. It's about having control of the game. Um, we lost the die roll. And we're going to mulligan this. We can't play anything, so there we go. This hand is a lot better. Uh, we have uh, all of our manas. We have something new in turn 2. We can play a Tower or Drake on turn 3. He's opening with a Gulgari Guildgate. Play this. We get actually something better to do on turn 3, which is some Spider Griffin. And this might actually be the Rectos deck, uh, especially the green, instead of the Bulgari deck, especially the red. And we have Drain Pipe Vermin, and uh, I'm getting really scared of Pack Rats right now, because that's the only card I can think of that would make playing this card a good choice. Then again, as I said in the last game, I think the quality of players return to Raftica is a bit less right now because all the good players are still focusing on gate crash. Um, which is also kind of a weird situation. I know that when a new set comes out, the old sets probably become irrelevant. Um, but it's not the case this time because we are going back to return to Raftica and we're going to need this set once more and letting yourself get out of shape on these cards. Even though the format freshens up and it's completely new and you need to reevaluate how these cards work in the three set draft and the triple different draft to draft, um, you still need to consider that you need to know these cards, you need to know these tricks, you need to know what is in this format and just slacking off like this is um, not a bad thing to do. We drew the Supreme Verdict, which we can cast, so I am thinking let's play as defensively as possible to get once again, as much value out of the Supreme Verdict as we can. So instead of playing the more powerful Sunspire Griffin, I'm playing the Cellar of Songbirds because it gives us two blockers instead of one. And I'm just going to harass him. I'm going to kill the, the Drain Pipe Vermin if it attacks. Uh, I'm going to jump to the Rack Mangler. I'm going to see what he's going to pump out. 
is having a Gogar key rune. That's less than fortunate because it um, stops us. It doesn't die to Supreme Verdict. He's only attacking with the Mangler. He doesn't want to kill the Drain uh, Pipe Vermin for a card of ours. That's good to know. Which makes me also wonder if I should block at this point. Uh, I think we can take 3 damage. I don't think he has a whole lot of suddenly aggressive cards. And here we have an island. Uh, right now we're uh, still uh, doubling pretty fine as a uh, as Celestia deck, by the way. He doesn't even know we have blue yet, so I don't think there's any reason for him to assume we're on a Azorius deck with Stream Verdict. I'm going to play with the Celestia Guild Gate. I'm just going to take it slow. Uh, I'm going to hold the bird back to block. Uh, if he attacks with Gogar Kiru, that's one thing I definitely want to destroy. So um, let's let's just put the ball in his court. Let him do his thing, and then we'll answer with any one of our cards. Uh, preferably Scream Verdict, but having to Void Guild or something first is okay with me. And I think it's horrible how many key runes he has, because that's really throwing a spanner in my, in my plan. And here, now he is comfortable with trading the Rain Pipe Um So, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I could wait another turn. I'm, I'm going to kill the Vermin anyway. And I'm, I'm going to take the track mangler for another turn. I really want him to do something that's worth doing for a play Supreme Verdict. Now our choice basically becomes, uh, do we want to discard the island, do we want to discard the Tower Drake? We want to discard the island, I think, because we can always wait for more lands, and um, Tower Drake actually is useful here. We have another planes, so that fulfills that requirement. I'm going to play the Void Wielder, so we can uh, stall up his boards, he can turn the back wrangler to his hand. Oh uh, yes, I used this ability. And do I want to counterattack? Yes, I want to counterattack. I want to deal damage with my bird. Um, none of his attackers right now is good enough to really bash through these defenses, except for Guy Kirun. But attacking with Kirun means that he has to pay three mana, um, and then the only thing he can do besides that is play the track mangler. Um, and then we'll just take two damage from the Kirun. So I'm not. Uh, I think this is a good situation to be in. He has Stab Wound, which I like a little bit less. He plays on the Void Wielder. And now we'll need to get rid of the Void Wielder as soon as possible. And just playing um, Supreme Verdict on this is a bit of a waste, but maybe we don't have a, a choice. I'm going to keep this back. I'm going to attack with both these creatures. Um, since if he plays a Direct Mangler and activates Key Rune and attacks, we'll block with Void Wielder. And then we'll take one more damage, but his turn will be gone. Of course he can activate Kogai key runes, I'm hoping he's thinking I have a trick because I forgot about that. Or maybe it would just be fine to just play the Supreme Verdict after he activated the key rune. I think this actually might turn out better than I hoped it would. We'll get rid of the stab wound, we'll get rid of the key rune, which are two of the most concerning problems right now. <coughs> we drew the only card we can play because we discard the, discard the island, but we have nine other blue sources in the deck, so... Not there. Okay, so he was really messing up on how to tap that. He's going to block sell or some words. <coughs> and I'm going to play Supreme Verdict. And it's not the best verdict you we could cast here. I mean, I would have gladly taken out a Drag Mangler along with it. Um, and there's still the chance that he's playing a land to drag Mangler and attacks with the Red Skew and the Mangler, and then we'll be in bad shape. We need to draw a land to play two blockers, and then that still won't be very good. Yes, Kogari Guildgate. So, we're still alive. <laughs> I am a bit concerned about the number of cards he has in hand. But we can still pull through this. There are a lot of cards we can draw right now that are really good. And uh, we're not dead yet, so. Uh, here's the island, so we can play the Frostburn Weird. Which is actually the card that I want to have right now. And we can play Sunspire Griffin, which doesn't add a whole lot on itself, but is still just another creature, a backup creature. And here comes something fat, six mana explosive impact. Yeah, and there we're going to add to this. Um yeah, this um I, I made a a misplay. Uh, while attacking with the 1-2. That said, uh, we were already put in the clock by the full Void Wielder and Drag Mangler, and our slow hand just wasn't able to cope with, uh, with the speed that he produced. 
He didn't have to do a whole lot this game to win from us, which is a bit disappointing from our side. But I think we can make up for it now that we know what he's uh, what he's attacking with, what he's coming from. Now uh, well certainly we're going to take the play. Uh, this hand is pretty okay, uh, even though we're lacking a color. Uh, we do have the king and prison to play, the arrest to play, and even the guild mates to play if you really need to play something. Um, we have a little bit of prospect if we draw blue mana or lands that we have two very decent spells. And um, since he's probably going to try and outrace us, I think this is a very decent hand to just um, put some pressure on back and make sure that he has something on the defense instead of on the offense. And we get another arrestor, I'm pretty fine with that. I'm actually going to risk my Vita Guild Mage here by playing it out. Uh, I don't mind if he takes a turn to stab wounded or anything because that just means he takes temple from a turn. Uh, if he plays a creature we can use the arrestor and he still can block so that will be uh, will be in good shape. If you use a dragman to attack, we'll just attack back. Which is also good. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. Of course I'm courier which you can cast. So I'm, I'm really hoping we're going to find the blue source right now. Um, because we're going to need it to finish off the end game. I'm going to lay down a strike mangler for a turn. <coughs> if he has another blocker, we'll play the arrestor and lay down the blocker. Um, which means strike mangler can block, so that won't be the best thing to do. He has a key rune. Okay. Not that bad. And here's the transcode promenade, which is actually one of the best cards for us to draw right now. It provides us the blue mana. Uh, it, uh, we can still do something in this turn, which is play the other arrestor. And uh, and just go in for six, and he's already at eight lives, so and we have we have eight power on the board, so he has to be careful what we're what he's going to do, and uh, what we are going to do. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of options, and since he's playing, well, expensive spells like explosive uh, impact, and they don't give him a lot of room to wiggle, and he does unfortunately play crap like Red by Firm as well. <coughs> um, so we can attack and he'll have a pretty profitable block. Uh, he'll block the guild mage with the Dragwangler, the key will trade off and the trade off firm will kill the Norester. We'll deal him two damage and frankly that's just not worth my time. Um, we have a major life advantage so I'm just going to play the Tower Drake and see what he does against my flying creatures. He still can comfortably attack us. We have a lot of blockers to make a good block. Um, but what's even better is that we have a lot of counter attackers if he manages to just go all out and... Uh, there he has Aerial Predation, this is a good card for him. He drew another land. And now he's just um, waiting which one of us draws something first. If he doesn't have removal, I'm counting on my guildmates to still do something for us this game. Um, and he has Spawn of Fix Mahdi, which is okay. <coughs> he's wondering if he should unleash it or not. He did unleash it, and that's a very good thing for us, because he can't activate the Sky Key Rune. So we're going to make use of the Dramatic Rescue. Oh wow, he's even attacking us with the Drag Mangler. Um, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take the Drag Mangler. Here we have Hussar Patrol. And uh, now we can just attack him with everything. He only has one blocker, which is Rain Pipe Ferment, so maybe he has a removal spell in the form of Ultimate Price. Um, but we'll still be dealing a lot of damage. The trade platform can only trade with an arrestor, which is pretty fine with me. And then we'll still have the dramatic rescue to take care of one of his blockers next turn, and use our patrol to take care of his incoming attack next turn. He's obviously going to use this on us. And we'll discard Christine's judgment. I think that discarding courier would have been. Um, an equally valid option, but I want him to think that if, if we discard the courier, then he knows we have a trick. And I want him to think that we're just um, just sitting with the, all these expensive cards we can't cast, and we're just having to gamble right now that our races are only option. Uh, because I know he's plays explosive vegetation, uh, explosive impact, and this 11 damage is enough to finish me off. I mean, it will put me at 3, and wow, I'll be in such a bad shape. But if I'll just play the Usar Patrol, I can block, and if I play the Dramatic Rescue, I can send the Spawn of money back and. Uh, and we're done with that as well. Um, that said, he's only attacking with this one, so I'm taking the 6. I don't think there's anything in this format that can deal 8 damage in a single turn. <coughs> so 
so I'll just play the Usar Patrol, and that means that we already have more attackers than he has blockers. So he has to do something about this. There's an island for ourselves. I'm just going to send everything in, and um, he probably will activate Kirun. And I think he has a removal spell, he has to have a removal spell, uh, else he'll die anyway. Which means I'm just going to dramatic rescue his key room once he activated. Um, <coughs> if he does manage to survive this turn, then um, I can still play the cross town courier and make sure that uh, make sure that we have a blocker for the spawn of fixed Mahdi, so we're not dead yet either way. <coughs> but I think this is a beat for him. Uh, I think his, his powerful removal spell is explosive impact. Which he's going to cast. Probably on his harp troll. Then he can block one of these creatures. And the other two will deal him four damage and, and he'll die as well. <coughs> so yeah, this this game is ours, it's one one. Okay, so this is how we see that, that this match can also go. Um, basically the only cards that I'm really afraid of in this deck are the track Mindless. I don't know if he has multiples, but that card is really good, it's presenting us with a bit of a problem. Um, I think I might actually want to board in the armory guard now that I have seen a bit more of his deck because he only has the slow cards, he has this, uh, the, these huge creatures and the drag mangler is doing all of the damage for his deck so far. Um, I'm going to take it in, is there something I want to take out? Well I saw a stab wound which is of course become ma making armory guards and his patrols liabilities. Um, but I think I want to take out uh, one of the tower drakes. Uh, he didn't seem to have a very solid deck on the defense, so I think most of the attacking creatures will do their thing. We might even consider boarding in more cross and creatures for more speed, but this brings us with the unfortunate side effect that, um, um, well, that they can't really attack into track mangoes and stuff, and we can really fizzle out since we're on the draw and he has the tempo advantage on the play. Uh, I am also noticing Paralyzing Grass, which is very good against track mangoes, so I might want to bring that in as well. And um, yeah, I'll take out at least one tower drake because it's a bit lacking in the action in the early game, so it won't help us there. Um, I think the frostbite beard is pretty fine. We want to keep the king operation. And there goes the cross down crew. If we uh, had to play, I would have kept it in. I would actually brought in another one and see if we could tempo it out. But since we're on the draw, I'm still thinking we can win this by dragging it out to the long game, using the flyers uh, to stabilize before we hit five life, and um, going about it that way. And here we have a pretty solid hand. And keep this, of course. Um, we have uh, something to do on turn three, the tower trick, which is okay. I'm hoping to draw something a bit earlier to uh, uh, to block and to make use of swift justice, especially the tower trick uh, may fall victim to aerial predation, and that will leave us without blockers. We still have eyes in the skies, which is a very good blocker on turn four. Uh, the Transcult Promenade isn't a bad card to draw because it gives us something to do on turn 2 uh, while masking we don't have any creatures to play on turn 2 because let's face it, if we had a various arrestor we wouldn't be playing it right now because detaining Drain by Furman is just not good enough and it can't attack or block it even because it's a down trade um, so this is, this is pretty perfect, we're just seeming to be acting on curve to him even though we couldn't do anything else <coughs> Here comes his key rune. I'm wondering if I should have brought in the Sundering, uh, the Sundering Might that we had. Um, but, you know, he hasn't done a whole lot of thing with his key rune except play his fattiest turn faster. And we're not looking to temple him out in that front, so it's pretty okay. Uh, the skinning apparition, that's too rough. We wanted the last turn, but I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. We can turn and play the Usar Patrol next turn. Uh, I'm thinking that the Nightly Valor will be very valuable in this matchup since it provides a vigilance creature. Um, and it provides another vigilant creature, which is going to be uh, going to be very important. We need to block as much as possible. Uh, now I'm hoping that's a key rune activation, and it is a key rune activation, which means that he has nothing better to do in his turn. I'm going to take these four damages, go down to 14. It's not a major loss. <coughs> And now I'm going to present him with a very tough uh, scenario. I'm just going to keep Tower Drake up uh, to block so he can't make a decent attack. He already knows that uh, we have a big flyer that can take out his creatures. 
Uh, we'll play the Star Patrol if he attacks or if he doesn't attack regardless. So this is basically a trap for him that he already is seeing coming. We could consider playing the Ice in the Skies, especially if he develops a creature with more than two toughness right now. Uh, if he doesn't, I'm playing the Star Patrol and uh, powering that out. And here's Towering and Drake. That's probably the only creature with more than two toughness that still makes me say I'm not going to play Ice in the Skies. Um, so yeah, here's his art troll. <coughs> Here we have planes. And now I'm considering playing the Knightly Valor on the Luthor Patrol. We could play it on Tower Drake, which is obviously um, well giving it a better chance of attacking because we know he has fatties and we know he can probably solve his art troll eventually, but he does have aerial predation and that can't get rid of his art troll but can get rid of Tower Drake. Uh, it does make me wonder if he wouldn't have cast it already if he had it. Um, but still, I think Knight Valor on the Star Patrol is a safe bet here. So we're going to do that. The 4 6 is powerful, it can just attack. We have a Swift Justice to um, completely mess up the attack step if he does manage to find enough blockers. And if he has a removal spell and he tries on his Star Patrol, they'll always have Tower Drake to defend us. So here's Stab Wound. He's putting it on the patrol. We have the Keeping Apparition to get rid of it, so that's okay. <coughs> yep. I'll just play it before combat. Then you can see it. And then I'll just attack him with the patrol. Let's see if I can still trick him into uh, the blocking with Towering Indrik. <coughs> And he doesn't block, so I just want to deal him two damage. And there he goes, he goes to 12. Um, I'm going to play Slash Guild Guildgate, means I can't play Ice and Skies next turn, but I wasn't planning on doing that anyway. Um, and if he uses Rain Black for a win, I don't want to discard the land and give green mana because I'm still hoping that Fido Guys Guild Mage can do something good for us. Here's a Drag Mangler, which I'm not really concerned about at this point. Lose our patrol and tower drake and both handle him just fine. And settle of songbirds, that's pretty good. I'm uh, going to attack him with Lose our patrol and tower drake. Which means that if he decides to dogpile Lose our patrol with everything he has, we get the uh, good swift justice attack step and two extra damage from our tower drake. I'm not also sending in the knight because that is just too much advantage for him to just block the knight and the tower drake and take the four damage once more, or even block the drake by Furman. <coughs> He leaves it like this, so I'll just up the tower drake. There it goes. Not surviving that will do four damage with the night patrol. Um and uh, I can choose not to play South Songbird to save for Ice in the Skies, and I think we want to save for Ice in the Skies. Uh, to see what he does. Uh, Ice in the Skies is the option to make two birds or excuse me, or a bird in the night. And um, let's just see what he is going to do. Spell attack is of course a good blocker, yeah, but he's unleashing it, so it's not a good blocker. Which means that there might actually be more value in a bird than a knight, instead of just uh, just two birds. Let's see, if you make a bird in a knight, then he can block two knights with the Starring Endric and the Strike Mangler. Take four, five, six, seven damage with the bird, and we still have two flyers and the Cellar of Songbirds token. If we make two birds, he can block the Tower Drake and uh, the Knight with the Drag Mangler. Um, then they take four, five, six damage unless you box with the Dream Pack Furman. So it all comes out to about the same. Um, but I think in the end, having a flying creature extra is what makes a difference. I think this will incidentally also be the turn in which we're going to use Fifth Justice on this Knight to take out Drag Mangler. I'm fully aware that it'll make him scavenge the Tower Drake to a size that we can't handle. But um, um, I'm hoping that our flyers can make up for that. Or we can just let the knight die, you know, that's, that's also no problem. We can use the swift just to deal one extra damage to, uh, to our opponent instead, which is also okay. We can start looking out for his... Um, oh, we still have this on. We can start looking out for his counterattack. If he does have explosive impact, we're basically at 7 life. 
but I'm not really afraid of that because his full counter attack will include the red ski rune, which means he can't play the impact. Uh, we still have to use our patrol uh, to block. We still have whatever we play, which is our songbirds, and his fifth test is still granting us a lot of life. Um, so yeah, he's probably uh, block yeah he's blocking them with the Furman. He's taking care of either Tower Drake or a Bird Token. If he blocks Tower Drake, he'll go to six. <coughs> That's okay. Blocks a bird token, he goes to five, lose a bird. That's also okay. And he's blocking Tower Drake. So I'll just make Tower Drake a bit bigger. We could kill the Drag Mangler, make sure we have another attacker next turn. Um, but I don't think that's very effective. I don't think we need to save it for for his our patrol. Make sure that, that this one sur survives, stays on, uh, does his thing. And um, I think the birds will be overpowering him anyway. We'll, we'll have four attacking flying creatures next turn, and he has only six life. And the Towering Inner is the only thing that's standing between him and uh, a certain death by flyers. So, yeah. And also, I, I think the thing we should be worried about right now is that Drag Mangler makes Towering Inner very fat, or anything very fat, and that will do something weird with that. Okay, so we're going to have to discard a card, which is going to be planes. And after combat we'll have this guild gate. We'll play this one and have an extra bird. And we're in pretty good shape. There are some cards we can still lose to at this point. Uh, if he does have anything to remove uh, all of our birds, uh, then we are basically done attacking. So something like Electricery will um, stop us dead in our tracks. Um, but still, his board isn't all that exciting as well. He's holding probably a whole lot of expensive cards like the Spawns of X Mario or Explosive Impact. And even though we are at 12 life, that's way too high for him to take over with any of those cards. His attack step is basically one big mess. If he sends in his attackers, he'll certainly lose one to the Hussar Patrol. Set of song words will stop the other one. He'll deal with at most two damage to Towering Hendrick, and it will mean certain death on the backswing. So. These are all pretty unexciting alternatives for him, and these flyers are really making a, a giant clock. So, he's got to be careful what he's doing, he's got to think about what he's doing, he's got to plan this through, and um, this is just turning out in our favor. I mean, he does have more cards, but he just doesn't have time to do anything with it. <coughs> Which is an wrong bit of tempo in our giant card font deck. But he decides to do nothing at all. And we draw armory card, which does nothing at all for us. So I'll just attack him with everything, including the Seller Songbirds. We do have the armory card to play as a blocker if things go awry. Uh, we can also cash him with Swift Justice for life. And uh, he still can't pile up on the Usar Patrol because all the flyers are, are making uh, a real swing at him. Um, combined with the fact that the Seller of Songbirds is actually the lethal part of this attack step. Well, he has the aerial predation. He's stepping it wrong, so his Rector's Key Rune won't be blocking this combat. This is that's all fine. He might have something else <coughs> as a removal spell, or maybe he just realized that he tapped off this mountain, so he can't activate the Key Rune. Okay, so his Towering Enric is slowly going to eat up all of our bird tokens. Um, that's okay, he's still he's taking 6 damage this turn, so he's going to 2, which means that Swift Justice is lethaling every creature we have right now. I'm going to put this guard in with the rest of them, which is just another random attacker that is instantly lethal to him right now. <coughs> he doesn't have enough blockers for this, he doesn't, he can't handle this attack step. And especially not if he if we have Swift Justice. Now all four of these creatures are lethal to him. And he only has three blockers right now. And he needs to find an answer to a flying bird that doesn't cost him more mana than it takes to activate Rex Ski Rune. And even if he does find that uh, card, um, he is still going to have a problem with his Harp Patrol, which is eating up one of his blockers every turn. I am wondering why he unleashed his Fat Attack, because it would have been a really handy blocker right now, but it's just it's just sitting there, it's not doing anything. He knew I had a 4-6 wall at that point, and he still chose to release it, so that is definitely a mistake on his part.
I mean, oh, okay, I'll admit that it, it scared me at first that he had a spell attack that was going to, uh, that, that he unleashed, and I thought he was going to taunt me with some spell or other, that he had the removal spell for Sarp Patrol. And maybe he was thinking that and did have Assassin Strike uh, to get rid of the Usar Patrol. Um, but yeah, it's an oh, this is definitely death for him. I'm just going to rub it all over his face today, Drew and the rest uh, Here, let's take this Locust because that seems like a good thing to do. And now we're just sending everything in, and he's he only has two blockers for a four attacker, and he's going to die anyway. I'm not even having to use his fifth justice this combat. And there you have it. I love match one. And we'll have to wait for the finals, so this is my time to take a break. Um, overall, I'm really pretty excited about this deck still. I was excited when I drafted it, I'm still excited. This deck works, it's doing what we're supposed to do. This is not like Gatecrash, where you can have a brilliant deck, and you can still get out tempoed because the cards all focus on tempo. This is where the skills come in, where the thinking comes in. This format is offering us so much more to look at in the Gatecrash format, and I'm really happy that I put them back to back to just show the perspective between these two. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, leave you for a moment, I'll be back for the finals, and uh, I'll see you there. Okay, so here we are for the finals. <laughs> I'm, I'm missing what, a bit of time on my uh, on my timer, as you can see, because I had a little bit of a snafu with recording software. I've got it fixed now, uh, I was kind of left to notify my opponent, he didn't reply, so I don't know if you get it, but um, at least we can start now. Uh, he won the die roll, and... Uh, we are keeping this hand. It is a bit of a shaky hand. If uh, if this was gate crash, it would be probably unplayable um, because this hand is doing nothing, and you'll just get overthrown by all the powerful aggressive cards. However, I do believe that Supreme Verdict can give us enough of tempo advantage to win this through. Void Wielder is a very nice card to stall up even more, um, and we're we're free to draw it if we want. If we draw more lands, we'll be obviously in a bit of trouble. But um, you know, we could also draw like this and have something with the early game and still have Nightly Valor as a comeback after Spring Verdict. Uh, it seems like he's playing uh, the other Azorius deck. Uh, we passed enough Azorius for it to happen. I mean we did uh, manage to pass on a lot of um, uh, a lot of Tower Drakes and uh, we had to let go of his Air Patrol uh, at several points in the, in, in the stage. So, um, so yeah, it, it it does feel like like you can have a good deck out of it. He's probably having some of the Steel or Secrets. Uh, which means that I'll be playing the Cellar of Songbirds. <coughs> I really feel um, confident with this board that I can hold out long enough. I think Supreme Verdict won't be the best card in this matchup because he'll be probably doing about the same thing as I do. Except we know that you're going to blow up everything and he doesn't and that's what don't need to pull us through. He has Le Leo Sky Knight, um, and uh, that means he gets to draw an extra card from Steeler of Secrets. He could block with the bird, but I don't think that's worth it at this moment. So I'm just going to give him that card. I don't really mind him getting a little bit of his advantage out. Um. <coughs> and Island. And here's basically where we decide which direction we are going. We can just uh, continue loading up on cards uh, and then have the Supreme Verdict if things go wrong or we can just hold back and have Supreme Verdict anyway. The way this game is playing he's missed his fourth land drop and uh, there's of course a bigger chance that he's going to throw him because he got an extra card but that wasn't the land as well. So I'm just going to take advantage of the of the tempo that we have right now by putting the Knightly Valor on the creature and just attacking. I mean, I'm willing to drag a tempo race with him, with this board. Um, because I don't think he can handle it with his mana. And if he chip off some life, he'll be in more of a hurry to just overextend. And we can just still hold Void Wielder and Sunspire Griffin back as long as we need to. We can put him in and put on the pressure and make sure that we can win that way if, if we want to. And this gives us a lot of options. If I had known that he didn't have uh, an extra fourth land, then I would have killed Steel of Secrets. Uh, then I would have boxed Steel of Secrets with the bird token. So. Uh, he's using his Arresto to take uh, a turn off our cleaning operation, which is fine. We still have uh, a lot of other creatures that are capable of doing the attacking and the blocking duty. Yeah, he wants to trade some, uh, some damages in this race, that's also fine. I 
I'll just I'll just keep on developing land. Um, let's see, two creatures can trade killing apparitions, so I want them to not have two creatures. So I'm going to see if he wants to trade my knight for anything. Probably for your wrestler. Yeah, and he wants to trade it, so that's fine. Keeping the bird back so I can trade with the sky knight. Uh, the more we trade, the more he'll need to play down, and the more the spring verdict will become a will become a decent solution. If he wants to spend cards to remove the bird, like avoid vulnerability, that's fine by me. <coughs> oh, he's taking out the killing apparition. That's technically also fine by me because now we get extra value on a supreme verdict. <coughs> He's even skipping his attack step. So I'm just going to play the island. Um, we could play the Void Wielder and have some additional backup. Uh, but I think we could also just wait a turn. He knows something will be up once I don't play the Keening Apparition again. So I think I'll have to do that. But otherwise I'm just fine sitting here waiting. He didn't seem to have anything to really do last turn, so the worst case scenario now is that he activates his Earth's key and starts bashing us with that, but we have way too many life to be, f to f be feeling threatened by that. And this is a really awkward way of playing Tower Drake for two planes and an island, but we're getting a free Hoover Barrier, so it's all good. Uh, I'm just going to play the Supreme Verdict now. Uh, we draw an extra removal spell, so that's also good. We want to play some by Griffin after, so we need to keep those mana up, but it's hard to not to. And this is a really good Supreme Verdict. We got so much cards. We traded the Verdict, self Sorgmas and the Keating Apparition for the Steel of the Lee of Sky Knight, the Void Builder, the Tower Drake, the, the Hoover Barrier. That's a lot of card advantage, especially since we have the cards that have come back and he... Well, we don't know what he has, but chances are that, that they, those cards aren't as good as ours. We also have a little bit of a minor life advantage, but he got to keep... I'm sorry, it's key rune. Well, this card doesn't bother me at all. We have three cards that can deal with it. I'm just going to send in the Sunspire Griffin, I'll play the Tower Drake, which can hold back the Azorius Elecutors. Um, as soon as it gets uh, three counters, we can always opt to remove it, but with our flying creatures, I don't think it will be getting a whole lot of counters at all. So it's just basically a 3-5 dork, and you know, that's, that's okay. And he has Rune Wing, which is fine. I'll just uh, throw the Azurus Arrestor over it and, uh, and attack him for 4 damage. Um, <coughs> he even had to tap out, so he can't actually hit key runes, so he can't go 2 blockers on one creature. So I might even just attack and let him have the extra card that the Rune Wing provides. Oh, yes, a, a solid option is be a Skywatch. But I really want to see what he has. He, he might have a Swift Justice, in which case we'll have to use Tristanic Judgment on his, on his Rune Wing. But uh, in all other scenarios, he's just going to lose a Rune Wing. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty fine with that. But he, he does have Swift Justice because I would have blocked the Sunspire Griffin. Uh, and he's using a Zorius Charm. Well, okay, we'll just... Oh, he, and he's using it on the Griffin. Odd. That's completely not what I would have done, but okay, you know, or whatever whatever suits him. Um, I'm going to play the Void Wielder and send his Elocutors back. It's not that I'm, f I'm feeling threatened by his Elocutors, but uh, I don't want to lose a whole lot of tempo. I have the mana ready to use the Void Wielder and... Um, It'll leave him defenseless once again. If he wants to do something fancy for my Tower Drake, he can't play the Elegates again. If he wants to play the Elegates, he probably has nothing for my Tower Drake. So We know we'll be drawing a uh, Sunspire Griffin. So the question is, do we want to play Sunspire Griffin or do we just want to take the Skywatch out to play and deal one extra damage with the Void Builder? Uh, he has Frostman Weird, so that is a bit of a moot point by now. Um, <coughs> So he won't be dealing that extra damage, then we'll have to do a bit of math, and if we attack now he goes to 9. Um, with the Skywatch he'll die in 2 turns, and with the Sunspire Griffin and Tower Drake he'll die in 3 turns. Um, 
that's basically the difference, one single turn. And that's good enough. We have the, uh, the judgment and the arrestor to take care of anything that comes along. So we'll just play this card and shorten the turn of his lifespan. I'll take out the electrocutors because they have inherently more value than the frostbone weird. Also, I don't mind at all if he starts hitting me with a frostbone weird and tries to trade it for the point wielder. <coughs> I'm I'm just going to put a yield on this because I'm never going to respond to that anyway. <coughs> if you're going to win on the elect uh, on the uh, elocutors, then he deserves to win on them. And here's Vessel Soul, another one of those creatures that really has a hard time stopping my attackers. And for some weird reason, he really hates his planes, and he tapped both of them again, uh, so he can't activate his key rune. And once more, he's not even trying to make me have a difficult combat and we draw swift justice which is a good card if you're going to try and win this combat but uh, if he had a planes open I at least had to consider that he was going to activate his key rune and double block something um, but he's, he's not even allowing himself that option I'm also going to yield to this so he's on 4 I'll just add the griffin There's a cancel, okay, can they play that? I still have more than enough options to finish the next turn. There's a land, so we'll play the arrester. And we'll lock up the vessel soul. Just swing in with these two guys. Now there's always the option that he's just plainly forgetting that his risky room can be activated. Um, but it, it's a pretty obvious card, so I wasn't really counting on that. Now he's going to throw away his key rune. I could have thrust down his judgment it, but he still has two cards. He's been holding a, a few cards for a while. So I'm thinking that he has at least one more counter spell that he's just not willing to spend at this point. Um, he's basically throwing away his key rune and he still dies next turn. So I'm pretty fine with just leaving it the way it is. And he has inspiration. Good for you. And he goes to two. So now it's it's once again up to him to draw a second answer to my two flyers. Uh, the fellow soul will be throwing itself away next turn, even if he presents with that answer. So that's not a problem. And he doesn't have it. So we go to the next game, and this is the slow Azorius matchup. Um, this matchup is going to be decided in the air. As we saw, we have we both have a lot of good creatures on the ground. We're not going to win with attacking with those. So I'm going to take out the very speedy Crossdown Courier for the extra Skywatch because it flies. Um, there are some other cards in here that uh, I could consider like the Paralyzing Grasp. Uh, or maybe the Mishim Skins to protect from, from his trickery. But I think it's just not worth it. So all the tricks are not removal spells. They're just bouncing cards or things like Azorius Charm and they don't really hurt. Um, I'm also very happy with the fact that Azorius has really no solid answers to get rid of if you guys a guild mage. Um, and the Paralyzing Grasp, well, I'm, I'm very confident that I can win this air battle. I have two Knightly Valors, I have two Skywatches, two Tower Dicks and Spike Griffin. All the flyers I saw on his side were the, the worst flyers. He had the Vessel Souls, he had Azorius Kiru and he had all the creatures that I didn't mind him having. So, yeah, I think this is uh, the best configuration. I'll keep it like this. <coughs> I'll have to wait on for his sideboarding. Um, I think that the, the edge in this match is uh, is on our side. As I explained, we have more flyers, I think, than he does. We have better flyers. But also the presence of Fidigazi Gold Mage and Supreme Verdict. Um, those two cards are just going to win us so much games over over him. Um, of course, he has something like Azor Electrocutor. So um, he could manage a stillmate, force a stillmate, and then try to hold it for five turns. But... Um, 
that's just such an unlike, uh, unlikely scenario because we have so many flyers with so many tricks. We both have detained cards that can just mess up with those counters. Um, so no, I don't see that happening. This is a decent hand. Uh, keep in mind we have a lot of time in this matchup. Neither of us is going to go very fast. All of our creatures have two power, um, and we have we have things to do. Uh, the, the apparition is right on time. So turn two, we can do the apparition. Turn three, the tower drake, and if you do a land, turn four, you have troll, and it's a really good start. He uh, seems to be once more hateful of his planes, and he's playing chronic flooding on my land, um, which I I really don't mind. Uh, he might have a psychic spiral. So I might want to play a bit cautious, but there's no rush, there's no tempo in this match. So I am under no obligation at all to tap my Zero Skilled Gate, he just threw away a card to do absolutely nothing in this matchup. Um, even worse, he kept the hand with only two islands, so he's not going to do anything at all. And uh, I have King Apparition, so I can solve his Chronic Flooding if I need to. But I'm going to do now, he doesn't draw any lands. And he didn't run that, so I'm just going to power out. I'm just going to use that gate if I need it. And um, but this is awkward now. I can't cast anything. Um, well, I'm, I'm not afraid of using the gate right now. Uh, he's probably he did. I saw a psychic spiral in the draft. He probably has it. Uh, he probably considers this, uh, that his win condition. Um, so I'm just going to put out the tower drake. Fuck the cards and. Uh, and I'm going to win this in as short as uh, possible as I can. We lose two arrestors in Slitch and Guildgate, so that's not bad. Uh, I'm not happy to lose them, but you know, it happens. If he still doesn't have a land, then we're in start starting to get in good shape. Here we have Swift Justice, so I'll just send him the Tower Drake. Right now I need to go and develop my mana, so I need to play the, the Guildgate. It's I have nothing else to do, so... And I really want to power out the Knightly Valor on the Keeping Operation so that I can start doing those damages before he develops. He drew a plane, so now he can go and do stuff. Although all the powerful stuff that he can do is still uh, far away. He has Lee of Sky Knight. And it's holding Tower Drake, okay. <coughs> okay, so I did this nothing again. I'm just going to play Sharp Patrol at the end of his turn. So I'm passing turn. <coughs> okay, he drew a fourth land, so now we're probably back into a regular game in which he can cast spells and I can cast spells, uh, which means that I'm going to try to avoid using the Zerg's Gold Gate as much as I can to not fall into his second spiral trap. That said, I'm still going to use it this turn to play out to Zerg's Patrol because I want to be able to do something next turn. And I still don't know for sure that he ha that he does have a Psychic Spiral or, at or anything else, I mean. Here we have Nyland. And here go our attackers. I could have played the Knight Developer, but he has all his mana up, so he might have um, a Dramatic Rescue or perhaps the Cancel that he saw. And I'm not really really willing to lose a, a Knight Developer on that. Especially since he isn't doing anything, so if I don't do anything either because I still have another Rose Up Troll. Um, um basically make time walking him a turn because he forgot to do anything. He can also always have his inspiration to cast right now, but I'm so not feeling threatened by that. <coughs> he's trying to he's going to use his frost and weird, uh, pump it up a bit, make it two three to kill the king of prison. Uh we have to swift justice for that, so I'm uh, I'm okay. And there goes the Sky Knight. <coughs> he could have cancelled for the Swift Justice, uh, which would be a good trick, but I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. So I'm, I'm just going to pump this one up. And once more. And one, once more. And if he wants to leave it like this, then it's okay. If he wants to do something else, like use his orange charm or pump his frost and weird. It's okay as well. I'll lose another three cards to play the Swift Justice. <coughs> but that's okay. He could have the Azorius Charm, put the Tower Drake on top, and I lose the Tower Drake to the Chronic Flooding. That's an option. But um, I'm not really afraid of that. 
Also, I just um, thought of the fact that I was thinking wrong. I've played a lot with Sykes Parlor and Chronic Flooding in my own deck. Um, so, no, Sykes Parlor is doing nothing for him because he doesn't have a graveyard at this point. Okay, and he's making sure that his uh, Frostburn Weird is surviving, so he's taking care of our, uh, of our Keening Apparition. And I'm fine with that, he loses this Sky Knight, and this is a Sky Battle anyway, so. We lose Fight Wielder. I'm also okay with that. So yeah, now his Sky Knight dies, he's taking two damage from his Arbitral. And this is all pretty fine. This is a, this is a good outcome for us. Um, we need to take care of his Flyers. Leah Sky Knight was one of the few flyers that actually could beat down our Spear Sky Watches and Inspire Griffins. Um, so now he's back to Vessel Souls, and we're still having Tower Drake. There comes an action injunction. He's using another wrong creature, but that's okay. I'm not sure what his line of thought was with this attack. Um, Maybe he's thinking I'm going to take 2 damage anyway, let's just attack and deal 1 damage back. Okay, that's, that's a valid line of thinking, but still, I don't think he's winning this race at all, so not attacking would have been better. He's detaining Tower Drake. I'm going to pass this turn, play the other Zarp Troll and just uh, sit on that. And yes, is it Key Rune? So, there might be red cards in his splash. There probably are, yes, is the Key Rune. Here we have Nivis Guild Mage. I don't mind Nevis Guild Mage. That card is not doing what it's supposed to do anyway. With only one red mana, you can't really power out the ability two times, and the copying isn't that powerful. It's just really expensive. Once again, we p could have played Knight of Valor um, to pump up a creature, but he still has a lot of cards. There could be a Void Builder in there. And I have other cards that are of equal value to de deploy. I can deploy the Frostman Weird, which is a must block creature for him. Um, he forgot to block with his Frostman Weird this turn, I don't know why. I'm still getting the impression that all these players are not as good as the Gate Crash players. And I'm really starting to consider drafting more Return to Rift Guy again instead of Gate Crash. Because I like this format and the players are weird. <laughs> so he has the Void Wielder. And he's taking out the Tower Drake, which is A-OK. -okay. So now I can just slap the Knightly Valor on Frostburn Weird and make it a complete powerhouse that he can beat. Now we'll get the Free Knight, which is not very really useful right now, but OK. We'll attack with all of this. Yeah, that was kind of the obvious block for him. I don't mind him blocking this way. I'll just deal him 5 damage. I could consider dealing him an additional damage for 3 cards in my graveyard. Um, and that's okay. I mean, I uh, he stepped out. There's nothing in my deck that really needs those 3 cards. And putting him on 2 life means that all of my creatures suddenly become instantly lethal. Uh, we still have the, the, the Spear Skywatch and the Dry Metal Rescue, and we have 8 mana on the table, so we can get rid of 2 of his creatures. So what he needs to do now is produce 3 blockers. I think the only card in this format that can allow him to survive a turn are Blaster Squall and Supreme Verdict. Maybe he could have something weird like Chemistry's Trick, which is not a card I'd play in a deck like that, but you know, considering the level we're at. He might very well have. And he's tapping for mana. And this is our Iski rune, which does nothing for him. So I think this game is over. Um, I'm going to play Skywise up front. So now he has uh, two options. He can either do something and prevent the Skywatch from entering play, like cancel. And that's already good enough. Now he's tapped out and we have enough attackers. I don't even have to play Dramatic Rescue to win this game. This is already over. I just sent everyone in. There's no block he can make to survive this, and this match is also ours. <coughs> and um, this shows the difference between Return to Ravnica and Gate Crash. Uh, personally, I enjoy Return to Ravnica more 
precisely for games like this where you can think things through where it actually matters that you know the format, the cards in your deck where you can't accidentally lose because your opponent has Vojic Helverdeers and then Warmind Infantry and then Sky Knight Legionnaire and you can't beat that because you're playing a Simic deck which doesn't have removal um, so yeah, I, I prefer Return to Refica. I'm excited that Dragon's Maze is showing off all these powerful cards that don't seem to fit in well with the Gatecrest cards but fit in all that much better with the Return to Refica cards I am pretty much excited about having Orzhov work with the uh, much more powerful Azorius cards uh, in the Esper combination uh, instead of having the, the, the flawed Demir cards so yeah, I'm really looking forward to, um, to Dragon's Maze um, I'm really... Um, um, I mean, I enjoyed Gate Gatecrash as well, so I'm not sad that we're leaving Gatecrash but um, I'm, ha I'm happy to move on I, 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 don't, I don't have a lot of fond memories of Gatecrash, it just it was what it was couldn't be helped uh, I enjoyed it as long as it was here and now we're going to something else so uh, next week I'll probably be doing a bit of um, what we already know from spoilers and the week after that we'll probably also be dedicated to Dragon's May so um, uh, you'll see me then uh, I guess uh, in the meantime enjoy I can recommend playing some Return to Africa as you can tell the players aren't really up on the level the cards are worth a lot more on Magic Online in any case than, uh, than the cards of Gate Crash I mean, uh, Sphinx Revelation is still 20 ticks. Uh, things like that. There are a lot of cards that are really making you get your value back, and that's uh, that's also something to take into account if you're playing on Magic Online. So, uh, good luck in your drafts, and uh, I'll see you next week.